the meeting of Santa Clara City Council to order. I'd like to welcome everybody who's here with us tonight. Um, I'm Mayor Rick Rosenberg. We have President of Full Council tonight, Councilman Jarrett Wake, Councilman Denny Drake, Councilwoman Krista Hinton, Councilwoman Lena Mathis, and Councilman Ben Shakespeare are all here. Appreciate that. We'd like to begin the meeting with an opening ceremony and Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to ask everyone if you'd please rise and salute the flag. Turn it over to Ben. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Father in heaven, we give thanks this evening to meet here as a city. We're so grateful for this area in which we live, for friendships we share and quality of life we enjoy. We're grateful for the moisture that was blessed us with and ask you to continue to bless us with the needs and moisture needed for this area. We ask you this time for peace throughout the world that indeed those that are affected by this war might be comforted and the peace might win out. We ask a blessing upon this meeting that thy spirit might be with us. And the Things at hand might be resolved and all might be satisfied with the result. We say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ben. Um, Council, conflicts and disclosures. Is there any um, items on the agenda tonight that you may have a conflict with that you need to disclose before we begin? Okay, hearing none, we'll go ahead and jump into the working agenda. There are no public hearings scheduled for tonight. Um, going to item 4B on the consent agenda. Um, council, we have before you the approval of the claims and minutes from the February 23rd, 2022 regular city council meeting and the March 2nd, 2022 city council work meeting. Also the claims through March 9th, 2022. Um, calendar of events, um, you can see our upcoming meetings there on the 23rd and April 13th and 27th. Um, We've been asked to cancel the April 6th city council meeting because uh, we won't be able to facilitate a quorum that night. Um, any questions on the consent agenda council? If not, I would look for a motion. I just wanted to make a note that the shack deficit was less than normal. And the uh, claims. Well, yeah, I noticed that so too. That's positive. That's sure. good. Yeah. And with that, I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Got a motion by Jarrett and a second by Lena to approve the consent agenda as presented. Any question on that motion, Council? This, this is a money item roll call, Jarrett. Aye. Benny? Aye. Krista? Aye. Lena? Aye. Ben? Aye. Ayes have it, 5-0. Thank you, Council. Item C, general business. C1 is consider approval of a proposed code amendment to the Santa Clara City Zoning Ordinance by amending Chapter 17.12. Planning Commission and approve ordinance 2022-06. Santa Clara City's applicant, Jim. Thanks, Mayor and Council members. Um, let's go ahead and scroll down to the ordinance itself. Um, as you know, we've been bringing uh, a number of uh, code amendments. Uh, we're trying to do a cleanup of chapter uh, 17. We've had a few, and, and this is another. And this is specifically dealing with the Planning Commission chapter, chapter 1712. Uh, we've had a few meetings with the Planning Commission. They actually met on February 24th and had a public hearing on this item. We also came and had a discussion with the City Council on February 2nd uh, regarding the proposed ordinance amendment. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the ordinance itself. Okay, so we will go to 1712030, one more right here. And this, I'm just going to briefly go over some of the changes, the highlights. So this says removal and vacancy. Uh, the language says any member of the planning commission may be removed from office by the mayor for any reason with the advice and consent of the city council. The city council shall also have the right to remove any member of the planning commission for a failure to attend at least 75% of the planning commission scheduled meetings during any 12 month period. So that's new language that we've added to this section. If we go to the next section 17040, 
We've got it there. Uh, we've added language. The members of the planning commission sh shall serve with compensation in an amount set by the city council for meetings attended. And then the remaining language is, is what's already in place. If we go to 1712050, we've made some changes here to officers. It says the planning commission shall elect a chair and vice chair from among its members yearly. The election of the chair and vice chair will occur during the first regularly scheduled planning commission meeting each year. Um, so that that's change. Uh, let's go to 1712070. This talks about a quorum. Um, as we know, it's a seven member planning commission. A quorum consists of four members. Um, however, we've changed the language here to chair and vice chair. Um, it was chair and, and, and chair pro tem or pro, previously chair and vice chair is the language that's used most often. And then we have a little provision here. If the chair or vice chair is not present, a temporary chair uh, shall serve. And so what happens if we don't have either of those individuals, the, the remaining members vote a uh, temporary chair for that evening to, to serve in that position for that night. And then let's go to 1712090, powers and duties. This has changed a little bit. We're trying to clarify um, between this 1712090, and then we'll be coming back to you later with 1716 land use authority as to who is the land use authority and being specific for what those duties are. In some cases with, uh, with Santa Clara City, the planning commission is the land use authority. In other cases, it's the city council that's the land use authority. So this is more specific. You can see here conditional use permits that that's the planning commission, they're the land use authority. Variances of any kind, um, they're the land use authority. Interpretation of zoning maps and consideration of disputed questions of lot lines, issues or applications otherwise delegated to the planning staff when the planning staff determines that a public hearing should be held to ensure that residents can comment on the application. And then the next one, issues delegated to the planning commission by the city council, which do not otherwise require final approval of the city council. And then let's go down to the next section here, B, it says the planning commission shall act as a reviewing and recommending body to the Santa Clara City Council. So we general plan adoption or a general plan amendment, they make a recommendation to the council, the council's the land use authority, adoption of land use regulations and amendments, zoning map amendments, such as a rezoning, subdivision ordinance amendments, subdivision reviews for new subdivisions, phases, preliminary final plats, determinations regarding the existence, expansion, or modification of non-conforming uses, any other land use application or issues which the Santa Clara City Council delegates to the Planning Commission. And then item C and D says the Planning Commission is further empowered to hold all public hearings, which may be required for land use applications under state law. So the, this item was a public hearing with the Planning Commission last week. And they made two weeks ago on the 24th, they made a recommendation to the council and then your item is a public meeting, but they, cause they held the public hearing already. Um, and then it talks about the entrance upon the land, which is something that's been there previously. So uh, we've gone through Utah state code and noticed accordingly, we believe that the planning commission, uh, well, the planning commission did hold a public hearing. We did notice it according to state code, met all state code requirements. So we're good with that. Based on that, the Planning Commission heard this item on February 24th, 2022 and forwarded a positive recommendation to the City Council. Planning staff recommends that the City Council approve the code amendment for Chapter 1712 Planning Commission. So that's what I have for you. And please let me know if you have any questions at this time. Questions, Council, for Jim? Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Okay, Council. You've uh, we've discussed this a couple of times. You've got the ordinance before you, uh, the recommendation from the staff and the planning commission. Um, anybody have any questions? Anybody want to try a motion? I can make a motion. I'll move that we approve ordinance 2022-06 amending chapter 1712 for the planning commission as presented. I'll second that. Got a motion by Lena and a second by Krista to approve the proposed code amendment to the Santa Clara City Zoning Ordinance amending chapter 17.12 and approve ordinance 2022-06. Any question on that motion? This is an ordinance, roll call vote. Ben? Aye. Lena? Aye. Krista? Aye. Danny? Aye. Jarrett? Aye. Ayes have it, 5-0. Thank you, Council. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.
Item number two, appoint Logan Blake to the Planning Commission Council. Um, I've uh, I presented Logan Blake um, to be appointed to the Planning Commission and uh, he has accepted that position. So we would like to formalize that with you tonight. Uh, come on up, Logan. Make sure everybody knows who he is. <laughs> I'm Logan Blake. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Logan's a, a civil engineer in St. George, uh, growing up, at, grew up in Santa Clara, just right across the street, almost. Um, so he's very familiar with the city. He's got a good background in, in development and in engineering, and uh, I'm very comfortable. His resume is in the packet if you want to look at it, but I'm very comfortable with it, recommending him to serve on the Planning Commission with your consent. Questions for Logan? Hit him hard. He's got ask him a hard question. <laughs> Oh, I'm just excited. We we don't want him to pull out with an hard <laughs> He just looked. He's got to show up to 75% of the meetings. So, <laughs> And he brought a cheering section. He out. did. I'd actually like to hear from them. So. We uh, do have some months, Logan, where we just have one meeting. So I think you'll be okay. And just briefly, we're very excited to have him. And your first meeting's tomorrow night, which I know you know. So yep. thank you. Questions for us, Logan? I don't think so. Okay, somebody make a motion. I'll make the motion that we appoint Logan Blake to the Planning Commission. I second it. I've got a motion by Ben and a second by Denny to appoint Logan Blake to the Planning Commission. Any question on that motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Welcome to the club. Thank you, <laughs> Logan. We appreciate your service. We do. We're gonna love it. Okay, item C3. The unit Santa Clara appeal of conditions of land use approvals and related improvements. The appellant is app, appellant is Richard Kohler. Um, I'm going to turn time over to Matt. Okay, <clears throat> thanks, Mayor. Um, and I think what we'll do tonight um, on this item is I'll present some some introductory information to the council. Um, I, I know you're all generally aware of, of this item, um, but uh, I'll summarize a couple of things to get us started. And then um, maybe, uh, maybe the council could have some time to ask some questions if there are any. And then, Mayor, if it's okay, then uh, we could turn the time over to Richard because I know he's here and wants to present some things as well to the council. So, um, so by way of introduction of this item, the Inn at Santa Clara, everyone's familiar with this project. Um, it, uh, it was originally approved uh, for a PDC zoning back in uh, late 2016. So this has been a, a long road um, from that time till now. Um, there, there have been some issues that, that uh, Richard and the city have have worked through over those years of the development of the project. Um, and uh, we're happy that, that many of those issues could be worked through. Um, as, as, as the city sees things now, there are really two remaining issues that need to be resolved before his uh, certificate of occupancy can be issued for his last building, which is sometimes we've, we've referred to it as building A but it's the it's the single story building on the east of the property with the with the rooftop terrace on it. So if I say building A, that's what I'm referring to. So the two issues uh, that um, need to be resolved really date back to the city's original zoning approval um, and and the site plan that was approved at that time in conjunction with his PDC zoning. The first issue is. Um, that when the PDC zoning was, a, was approved for the project, there was a discussion at the city council meeting about um, the wall that's on the, on the terrace of building A. If you're familiar with the building, there's, there's a, a wall around the perimeter of that terrace. And there was, there was discussion at the city council meeting at that time about the height of the wall and how high it should be. There were concerns expressed by certain neighbors about privacy um, and uh, there were statements made at that meeting that um, that maybe that wall should be seven feet instead of three and a half feet tall to provide some additional privacy to the neighbors. There was a representation made by Richard at that meeting, which is recorded in the minutes and in the recording of the meeting where he said he would be willing to do that. 
um, and um, and and that ultimately was was not done when the building was constructed. Um, and and we can we can go into more details about that, but that's that's the first issue um, that that we've been unable to resolve with with Richard. The second issue is that uh, the stairs that are used to access the rooftop terrace are exterior to building A. They're on this. They're on the south end of the building, um, and those stairs extend into what is the the ten foot setback from the from the residential. Uh, property line to, to the south, um, and um, that uh, the, those um, those stairs are open stairs, um, so that you know someone going up and down those stairs can see can see out can can see potentially uh, over the wall into neighboring properties as well. And there's some there were some privacy concerns with neighbors about that. But just uh, just in general, our um, our city code requires that on a project like this, that 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 setback be uh, remain open, not have anything constructed in it. Um, and I think there's some history that might explain how it ended up in the setback, which which we can talk about as well. But um, those are basically the two issues. Um, I I've represented to Richard that if we can resolve those two issues. Um, whether it's, uh, you know, finding some kind of compromise or, or something else, if we can resolve those two issues, then, then my recommendation would be to, to issue his certificate of occupancy on that building. Now, um, for since about May of last year, I've been corresponding with either uh, the attorney that was representing Richard at the time, or with, uh, with uh, Jennifer, Richard's wife, or with Richard himself, um, trying to find some way to resolve these issues and some other issues that have now been resolved. Um, that back and forth, um, the, which was, you know, kind of on and off back and forth through the months, ultimately resulted in the city proposing a settlement agreement about a month ago, um, which I consider to be still on the table. Um, and that settlement agreement included um, that Richard would build uh, a, essentially a screening structure um, on the outside of those stairs to provide some additional privacy to the next door neighbors. Um, the last communication I've had from Richard about that settlement agreement is that he does not want to sign that and I'll, I'll let him speak for himself as to why that might be but but um, I, I'm sharing this just as an introductory summary just to give a sense of First of all, the time that has passed. Uh, second, all the effort that has been made on this, uh, certainly by Richard and Jennifer, certainly by members of the city staff. Um, the city council knows that we've discussed this multiple, multiple times, um, both in open meetings and in uh, executive session. So, um, you know, this is something that has a lot of history behind it, a lot of things we could talk about, a lot of details that we could talk about. but. That's basically the introduction, and those are the two issues that I think really um, the, the city the city council has the opportunity tonight to consider um, whether there's some way to resolve those two issues and and uh, issue the certificate of occupancy for the building. So, with that, I guess uh, if it's okay, Mayor. I'll just open it up to the city council if there's any questions or discussion that you want to have, and then we can give Richard a chance to present. Questions, Council? Will we start? Okay, Mr. Kohler. Yes, uh, Richard Kohler. I live at uh, 1020 Bloomington in uh, St. George. Um, yes, it's been a long time. This issue came up first. First time that these two issues came up was last May. Um, and we were at that time in the project completing our landscaping, which we had complete by about the middle of July. So it's, it was definitely a surprise to us that these were issues. Um, I have a series of images that I would ask to put up in a sequence, if you could do that. Number one being the first one. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, the, we obtained a building permit for this project in 2018. At that time, the I think Corey Bundy was both the city building official, chief building official, and he was the director of planning. So a dual role. And um, the building code, this is a quote from a section in the building code, says the code cannot require changes to the construction documents uh, where a lawful permit has been issued and otherwise lawfully restored. And we're relying on that. We lawfully obtained a permit to build the building as we built it. And the two issues that were raised, one challenges the position of a staircase, the other the height of a parapet wall. Both of those are clearly shown on the documents we received the permit for. Number two, if you can go to that. Hey, Richard, before we go on, would would you just tell the council where that citation is from? Where Where is oh, that? Oh, that's um, from the, the 2015 IBC, the code version that we're under, uh, that our permit is under. And it's in the administrative section at the beginning of the code. Um, the second one, I think that it's hard for me to read. <laughs> I think it says revocation. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, revocation and the, the underlying parts I've done myself. Uh, what it generally states is that the building official has the authority uh, to suspend or revoke a permit where it's been issued in error or where there is a violation of ordinances or regulations. Um, <clears throat> the permit uh, was acted upon by the, the people that were supposed to act on it. Corey Bundy as the building official uh, reviewed it and also at the, initially as the planning director. I know that in addition, uh, Bob Nicholson chimed in as a, a city planner, and I believe the documents we we prepared for a permit because it was interesting were reviewed by the uh, the whole uh, TRC uh, technical review committee uh, at the time. So this is uh, what's happened to us is the occupancy has been withheld. Uh, we're entitled to have it, we believe, and we believe that the building official, if he finds an error, and the error isn't, uh, I guess because I'm an architect and have been for 30 years plus, uh, I'm sort of familiar with what this would mean in another con in other context. The, and let me just give an example. Say a structure was built and the at a later date, after the building was the rebar and the concrete were poured, uh, the inspectors observed that even though the calculations and the uh, documents for the building showed that, that to be built correctly according to the documents, if the code had changed or if there was a miscalculation, there would be an error we brought to the structural engineer's attention and a remedy would have to be done. So the error is in part on the reviewing agency, the, the uh, in our case, Corey Bundy as building official. If he finds an error that's, uh, that's a discrepancy with the approvals, then he's the one that can initiate this action to revoke or withhold the building permit. We don't believe that happened in our case. We believe that uh, uh, although Mr. Bundy resigned from the city in the right after in fact we got one of Matt's letters just a few days in August we believe that the city building official uh, who has the authority to do this did not do this act okay we believe that others were instructed to, to do the act of, of Cody the subsequent building official by uh, Mr. Ants and we don't think that's correct just by law number next one please <clears throat> this is the, if we don't think it's correct, what happens? We believe and have believed, and we filed an application to the Board of Appeals 
because we believe this is a violation of the building code on the part of the city. So we, we applied uh, to the Board of Appeals. We were notified, our attorney was notified by Matt. We applied December 23rd, I think it was about the 19th of December when he first objected, Matt said we, we weren't entitled to a Board of Appeals hearing. And of course there was legal letters back and forth between our attorney and Matt. In the end, we're appearing here because this is where we've been directed to appear. And I guess that's fine, but we do think it's not the, not the right venue. We think the venue, the, uh, the lowest sense that's underlined says there would be qualified by experience and then training, uh, I think engineers, architects, builders, people that we're used to seeing in that kind of a thing. And because the appeal is technical in nature, and I'm gonna talk about technical things, I still think that's the better venue. Ben is a builder, that's probably helpful. <laughs> so, uh, number four. This is a picture, a three-dimensional picture of the, and I don't know if you could slide it a little bit. There's, I, I can't see behind the image of the city council, the picture of the staircase leading up to the roof. Uh, if you could slide it to the left or down that, okay. There's an open staircase with a glass railing. And this is a picture of what we got approved by the vote of the city council in October, late October of 2016. The staircase, the relation of that staircase to the building has remained the same from the, this zoning approval all the way through construction. The difference is we reversed the direction of the staircase. It was originally there were two staircases that went up to the roof while I changed the, each end of the building. And um, so they were both open stairs, meaning that there's no roof above them. They, in our case, also open tread, and they had depicted, were depicted at this time with glass railings. And they're pretty, the one that we're talking about is pretty much built like that. The second, we decided not have, to having two was too much access, and the neighbors had complained about that to the roof, and they were concerned about how many people would go up there, how they would be uh, regulated, what, how we could mitigate the impacts of our guests going up on the roof. Go to the next picture, please. This is the... Uh, Approval, you may need to zoom in so that we can see, okay, there's a light blue line that goes, that's the 10 foot line. We did not in either the planning, uh, the zoning documents or in this document, which is a building permit document, we did not annotate the actual setbacks in part because we'd been advised by the building official that we would have more negotiating room with him and the planning staff if we depict where the lines were and where our improvements were. Uh, and didn't tie ourselves down to the specific dimensions because we knew things could change. Uh, both I knew and Bob Nicholson and Corey all knew that was the case. So in November of 2018, this was a site plan. And you'll notice that the stairs by the building are now going, you're ascending the opposite direction toward the city hall. You go up the staircase where, instead of the other way around. And what that did was it allowed, we started to become clear that we, we maybe could control that by changing the direction. We also see that the nearest building to the red property setback line is situated about two and a half feet away. And that's important. And, We'll talk about that in the next couple of images. Okay, so in as the building permit was getting getting issued, Corey Bundy and he had been present in the meeting with that Matt reference, where Matt says that I promised to to build a seven foot tall parapet wall on the south end of the building. I did not make that promise. Uh, that it was discussed. I promised that I would do the best thing for the neighbors, what the neighbors wanted, okay? And the neighbors had in the, uh, they were not only concerned about the height of that parapet in that direction, they were also concerned about the height of the building. 
And we had a discussion. I remember leaving a meeting here and going out in the foyer and three women neighbors approached me and they asked, how tall was the existing wall in the drawings? And I said, well, the main floor of that building is zero. The roof deck structurally is at 10 feet. And the wall that we've, uh, parapet wall will be approximately five feet above that, making the building height from the foundation 15. And the parapet's not that tall because we're putting a uh, layer of soil. We're planting green grass there. So there's a soil thickness that reduces the effective height down to approximately four feet something. Uh, and that's how the building was designed because all three women, two verbally expressing, we don't want the wall taller than 15 feet and the third one just nodding her head. Uh, and I don't recall names and faces. I just know they were neighbors and approached us as we were exiting that they felt strongly about the height of that wall. Now, let me explain uh, a little more in detail. That wall sits at the edge of the building and our patrons will mostly when they arrive at the roof and how that wall height affects people is they will more often than not be seated in lounges uh, or if they're standing, they're standing at some distance away from that wall. And at the, because of the horizontal nature of your eyesight and eye levels being about five feet, for a person, maybe five foot four for a man, five feet for a woman, uh, or a little less. Um, when you look at a distance and you look across the parapet wall, you're not able to look down into the yard. It's just that's an angle, even if it's if the difference is a four foot wall at the edge of the grass, at the edge of the place, and you standing at some distance, five feet, ten feet or more, certainly you can't see down into the edge of the yard. You can see the roof of that home, but you can't see down at any specific thing. So going through that, and I did discuss that with Corey at some length and how that I thought was high enough to be beneficial. Um, Corey then, and he said, well, where did you make them seven feet tall? So we did it at the rear because there, there's a window that we can see and they can see us in a two-story home. And that we felt would be the one that should be uh, made more uh, blocked, okay, for both privacy. Uh, so Corey writes this letter, Richard, uh, because we had addressed the issue that uh, the discussion was in the city council. I didn't make a promise, but I said I'd address the issue. And so Corey asked in that email, what's the design of the seven foot wall and uh, the safety of barrier of the reflecting pool? So the next, if the next image I answer just a few days later, and I include details from the construction drawing showing the height and the whole sheet of building A is the smaller drawing on the right uh, with the, uh, it says A3 sections. And you can see how the roof is constructed and pretty much what I've explained. Now, in addition, and this next one I think is our video, is that correct? Okay. Just let this play. And the last ones were entering the kitchen laundry area, our lobby for the our, our inn. Then play the next one, the next video. We're leaving to the backyard. We're going up the stairs that have the grass railing still been turned around. Then we're, we're seeing what's on the roof. The umbrellas, of course, aren't there yet and the pool isn't complete, but that's our grass roof and that's the vision we see back into our property. We prepared these videos for, for Corey's benefit, I think to show also at the TRC meeting, but and it, I, he also mentioned that he showed them to the mayor. I don't know if he did, he just asked me that to send him the videos we'd shown him to him in his office. We had had to deliver a thumb drive at the time to Corey because they wouldn't email, they're, they're too large. They were at that time anyway. Um, it, I'm showing it to show that we thought we had a breakthrough on the privacy issue. 
rather than going publicly up the staircase with some kind of a lock gate that we'd have to worry about time of day, when could people get there? Can people jump or go over that? We decided that we would make the upstairs roof deck only accessible if you entered the manager's office and then went up the stairs. That's what that video illustrates. What that does and how we think that really solves more of the problem than had we done the, pair, the, the seven foot high wall is that the people going up are only going up as our guests and they have some supervision. The worries at the time were they would make too much noise, that they would um, engage in unsavory activities. But by us accompanying them up the stairs and taking them there, I think we've done the best we can in solving that problem. And Corey agreed with that. And I, I think other members of the planning staff and the TRC also agree that this was a good solution to what we, to, from our standpoint, to the problem. And that the taller parapet wasn't, ne wasn't necessarily needed or particularly beneficial. Next one, please. This is, uh, if you go in close enough, slide it up just a bit. Okay, it, go in closer. So, okay, you can see a red line at the bottom of the drawing, and then you can see a gray wall. What happened, um, and this is probably fairly important, we hired uh, actually Rosenberg Associates to do this survey. And that was a recommendation of my general contractor, Mark Weston, and uh, came later than we wanted, but everything came later than we wanted back then. Uh, the survey is the red line. And it, for reasons that were never completely explained in, uh, by the surveyor, all he knew was that the record showed the survey dimensions from the Mayor Rosenberg, the markers, what are they called? Property Se corner? Section corners. Section corners. That, that possibly a reference to a section corner had been either incorrectly dimensioned, not, not likely that it was moved in our era because the properties that were built next door by Gates, Googlers, Clowers, and the, our neighbors on that side, and the walls that were built along the back of uh, Gates and Googlers' homes were built in after, but not too long after 1992. So more than 30, kind of like 35 years till the time that we were building. And we knew, uh, as and I, would, I talked to a few attorneys, but I didn't hire any of this because I didn't, I, I thought that I understood it correctly and they explained it the same way. That if that block wall, that's six feet higher, taller, had been there for longer than 20 years, we still own that property between the red line of the survey and the block wall. So the, the survey says, says it's the survey line, but the property line remained for our purposes, the, the block wall, the center of the block wall. What that means is we, now we show there's 10 foot from the setback line to the survey line. But there's three feet from the survey line to the block wall, which we believe was the property wall. This was understood by, again, the building official and the planning, the city planner, Bob Nicholson, and both thought that this was a reasonable thing. We have been constrained because of the mulberry tree. We actually, in the earlier design, in the fall of 2018, shortened the length of building A by two feet from 80 feet without the staircases to 78. We still didn't have enough to accommodate this without placing the stairs and getting as close as we could to the bank. There were some issues about uh, the people to the, the neighbor to the east is, was Morris's and they have a driveway and it goes up. And at a certain place, if we tried to put block walls and contain the mulberry tree there, they would, their, their tight lines text that their driveway would have obscured. That was one issue, but the other one was the wall would have been so short from our little patio areas to the Morris' side that you could have just jumped over the wall. So we had to keep it to the south at this position. This was the best we could do. Now, what that means is we still have conceptually approximately the setback of 10 feet 
from the staircase to the wall that we believe is the property line. It was approved, and then these were the drawings. This is the site plan that was redrawn after the survey came in February, late February of 2019. We redo this site plan in April of 2019 for the footings for the buildings in May of 2019. And the, the city planning staff, the city building official was aware of the implications of this drawing and felt that this was permitted because and the explanation I got was, well, it's still farther away to the staircase than it is to the silo. It's more than two and a half feet, so it's okay because you've already negotiated that minimum setback of roughly two and a half feet. And this is a distance of almost 10, maybe nine something or eight something, closer to nine feet than anything else. Now, I'm going to go to the next slide. Richard, before you move on, can I just ask one question sure. about that plan? Yeah. Was this plan ever submitted and approved by uh, by someone at the city? Because I have not been able to locate one that depicts that. Okay. Why? So there's a set. And I know you asked this question before. This the, They've kept, kept the permit set. That would be the prior drawing that we talked about when it was 10 feet. Mm -hmm. But the, the survey came post-permit. And all the post permit drawings are supplemental drawings. And we issued a lot of supplemental drawings. The path of the drawings was for me to send them to Mark West and my contractor, and Mark would forward them to uh, Corey. And where they are now, where the electronic copies, I still have mine, Mark still has his, where Corey put them or didn't put them on the, on the servers, especially after his departure, I do not know. But it, yes, it was submitted to the city as a supplemental site plan, which it has to be. We had to change and adjust because of the survey. Was there a response to your, I mean, Corey asked for a, the drawings and you sent a supplemental plan that didn't show the seven foot drawings. Was there any response to Corey on that? No, that the normal process with a building official in any jurisdiction I've ever worked is the building official asks a question, the architect or designer or engineer responds with part of the drawings, an explanation from the building code or whatever he does. And then if it's another exception is not, another correction is not requested of the building official, the permit proceeds to be issued after that fact. That's how ours happened. There, that's not, it wouldn't be normal for the building official to say this is approved. It's just normal that it's accepted and not, not brought to, in other words, we asked what he, what he wanted and he got it and it was okay. So on the original plan that showed the seven foot wall, which one? Well, the wall that's seven feet or actually even taller a little bit than seven feet is the wall at the rear in the center on that where you see the full sheet depicted and it steps down a little level. That's how it's built now. And then it steps down to right now, the distance from the, the waterproof deck, the structural deck to the top of the lowest parapet is 60 inches, 62 inches in some place. The deck varies, so about five feet or slightly more high right now. We will still put soil there to to reduce the height of the parapet effectively, but the top of the parapet stays where it is. Another thing we did, which I really haven't explained, I didn't even bring photographs for, was when we built the parapets, they're not a normal thin parapet. All of our parapets are 30 inches wide. And so that we can put plants and other planters and materials on top of that to further enhance the top of it, not make the building look taller, but may, uh, do something still for privacy on top of that. Um, we, uh, the, the fat parapet also makes, if you, if I'm, if there's a parapet and it comes up to about there on me when we're done, okay, and I look across it, I can't look down. I can't look down the, into a yard, I have to look out toward the roof. And that, for me, uh, that height is about 64 inches. My eyes are about 64 inches above my feet. It's gonna vary for other people. For some athletes, if you were, say, six foot five, uh, six foot, a 72 inch or a six foot eye level would be what you'd expect. And if that's the look horizontal only level, not look down. And the fat parapet helps that happen. It costs us more to do, but we were happy to do it. Um, Matt, do you have any more on this? I don't think so. Okay. 
Okay, now this is not from your uh, ordinances. This is from St. George City's ordinances. And why this matters is that Bob Nicholson had been the city planner in St. George for decades. And he was at the time Saint, uh, Santa Clara City's planner. And this one says there are always, in most zoning ordinances, there are things that can be in setbacks that are not necessarily enumerated in the zoning ordinance, but, and they're not enumerated in the building code. They're common sense to some extent, electrical panels, mechanical, uh, uh, an air conditioning unit. They, uh, in there, here they, this is St. George City, eaves can always overhang the setback, chimneys, flues, cantilevered balconies, decks, ornamental features, open fire escapes, and open outside staircases, inside and rear only. This is St. George City, not Santa Clara, but it's uh, where Santa Clara's enumerated them. There was some of this happening and being told to us and understood by staff, were these staircases really something that could not be in the, stair in the setback? And the conclusion that we heard a couple of times from different parties on the city staff was that it was okay if, because they were an open stair and look, they were all glass and they were hardly an intrusion at all. And there, that, this says not more than four feet they can intrude and that's approximately how wide our staircases are, four feet. So next please. This is a picture of our staircase. Uh, before there's a wall that pro prohibits you from going to the stairs now that's there. Uh, to the right of that last white double door that's uh, like five feet high. But um, you can see the stair leg, you can see the glass staircase above the beam by reflection. It's not an obtrusive feature. And I think that's important because we were judged that we'd spent the extra money on this to make it a very light, delicate structure so that its presence in the, in the setback was not deemed hostile by the staff. And we spent money to accomplish that. So next one, please. Oh, these are, Matt, these are, I didn't include these, you must have. Oh, yeah, those must be. So I, I'm, that, that ends my presentation and I, if there's any questions. But the timing, you can see that having done all this and believe that we were in compliance by relying on the staff's comments to us at each stage, the, the stairs in the setback came up at the building, issuance of the building code. It, they were in the same place they are now, relative to the building. After the survey, and you can see how we adjusted, we increased from a 10 foot to the wall, which was the property then, we went to 13 approximately. Okay, so that we pushed our concrete back to the north as far as we really could. And then, and uh, I know Tom's here and the Googlers, uh, about a year after the, uh, so I'm gonna say April-ish of 2020, the Googlers and the Gates approached us and they said, we see the survey stakes out there and we would like to know, you've always agreed with us that you would help us raise the height of the wall if, and contribute some money. Would you agree to us now, both, both owners, would you agree to still pay us money and allow us to move the wall to the position of the survey line? And I walked both Tom and separately Travis Gates uh, around the property, showed him where the footings were for the things that hadn't been built yet. The glass stairs weren't built yet, but the footings for it were in position. And I said to both of them, these are the implications of what you're doing. You will decrease the distance of your wall to our features that are already in concrete. Um, is that okay with you? And if it is, we'll agree to uh, the contribution of funds and your, uh, we'll give you permission to move the wall to the survey line, enlarging their backyards. And we did that with that gentlemanly, we didn't think it would cause any problems. That, that move was also Gates and Googlers hired the Mason, Lauren Ovid, 
Is that is that Crow Coast? I, I, <laughs> I think it's Orvin, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's Lauren Orvin. Anyway, uh, the Mason got the permit on their behalf to to do that to to rebuild the wall. So the city staff reviewed where our stairs and where our setbacks were three times. The building permit itself, the post survey drawing, the supplemental survey uh, site plan, and a third time, a year later than the survey adjustment thing, uh, when that property line wall was moved. And that's probably the end of my presentation. <laughs> Mayor, can I take just a second and maybe just comment on a couple of things that Richard said? And I, I appreciate Richard for, for that timetable. I, I actually, um, I generally agree with the timetable that you laid out, Richard. I do want to address just the question of the actions of, of city staff versus the actions of the city council which I think is what the real issue is here. And I know that Richard may not agree with this. In fact, his attorney and I went back and forth on this a little bit as well. Um, but just for the council's benefit, so that, so that you understand uh, where, where I'm coming from, the, the act of approving uh, the zone change on this property uh, from whatever it was previously to the, the PDC zone that it is now, that is a legislative act. It's an act that, um, that can only be done by the city council because it's a, a change to the city's zoning ordinances and the zoning des designation on the property. And when the council acts in its legislative capacity and, and, and takes that action on the basis of information that's presented to the city council, that, that legislative act is supposed to guide everything that happens after that. Um, so all the things that that Richard has been speaking about his interactions with, you know, members of city staff, uh, TRC meetings and those kinds of things, they are all administrative in nature. In other words, the purpose of those things is ideally to carry out the legislative uh, direction and intent that the that the city council has given. Um, I think it's clear to anybody, anyone that reviews the information the way that Richard has tonight that there, there's been some inconsistency on the administrative level. That does not change the fact that the city council um, performed a legislative act uh, in approving the zone change and that that decision was based on information that was presented, including again, a commitment from Richard to do certain things. Um, and, and the actions of um, staff members acting in, in an administrative capacity uh, doesn't change the, the, that legislative act. So, and, and, and this is why I have for a long time invited Richard to come back to the city council, because in, in my view, where, where this began with the city council and began with the legislative decision of the city council. Uh, really, if something different is gonna happen than what was originally approved, that really has to happen through an act of the city council, the legislative body of the city. So I appreciate what Richard has said. I, I don't want to, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm offering these comments with uh, respectfully, you know, to, to, to what he has said and I don't dispute factually anything that he has said, but I, but I think the fundamental difference in, in the way that Richard is looking at this and, and the way that I'm looking at it, um, and I, I think legally, you know, that the, the, the way that, that I'm looking at this and the way that it's been pre presented to the council is correct. That is, these are legislative issues that, you know, whether it's, whether it's, a building official or a, a, you know, a planning official or um, a clerk or whatever can't, uh, can't change the, the conditions and requirements that the city council has incorporated into, it, into its legislative decision. So that's why, that's why we're here. That's why I'm glad you're here, Richard, because I think this is where this needs to happen and where this needs to be considered. 
And with that, I'll just say that council, you know, this is as the legislative body, this is this is within your wheelhouse to decide what happens from here. So I just would my just one clarification. In the actual minutes, there is discussion about the location of the parapet wall and the height. But in the motion to approve the project, and I know the mayor had some preamble to this, which you'll remember, there was no conditions attached to the motion by the city council. It was approved just as the drawings were. And that and that is again factually correct. There were no stated conditions, but that motion was made in a context. And that context was that the city council was approving the zone change based on the representations that were made to it. And so again, that's that's a point of sounds like disagreement uh, with no respect meant uh, no disrespect meant to Richard, but but I, I disagree. So okay. Okay. thank you. Questions for Richard, council? Specific to the building now, um, you know, you talked about everything that's going on top. Is the building complete? Is the landscape elements on top and all of that that you plan on no, doing? Are the, because of this dispute, we have not improved, finished the pool. The roof grass has not been installed. And any landscaping up on the roof level hasn't been in, yet to be installed. One option because of the seven foot rule that we can't i don't believe le easily obtain uh, achieve seven feet but if you and i didn't bring pictures but if you go by our site you'll see some large galvanized tubs that are about 22 inches tall and about i don't know two and a half three feet long we thought that we could place those on top of the existing parapet wall so the the numbers are this it's 60 inches at least down to the deck, the structural deck. The 22 inches brings us up to 82, and then we lose about 10 inches for the soil. So that gets us to six feet, 72 inches for the top of those galvanized tubs, which we can place along the south property line. In addition to that, they'll have plant materials that will go above the six feet. So if my, how tall you have to be to see over it, uh, somebody who's six foot five could see just horizontally over the top of the tub. It would not cost us building a new wall. We could do it with, I think, a better looking approval with the plant materials in the tubs. And they don't have to be galvanized. If there's an issue that Gates uh, Googlers may have about the color, uh, Tom has talked about colors with me before, uh, on the roof, if you remember. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll, we're willing to do, uh, we'll take, uh, you know, some input on the colors. Okay. And, and Mayor, more specific is the council, because we had this discussion uh, a couple months ago, I believe. And actually, I think we had, in, in my understanding, and, and maybe I misunderstood, we, we had re, uh, put back another proposal. You had proposed something at the, at the cinder block wall there, a, a screening element that I think came before the council. And we had felt that uh, you know, putting it on proper line just wasn't appropriate on that. But our what I understood as our request going back was to address the stairs coming up, not, not the roof line. And so am I correct on that? No, you're correct. So, so in one of our letters, and I'd have to go back to see which one it was. It maybe was August sometime. Um, we had floated the idea of some kind of alternative screening, you know, just to address privacy concerns. And um, in response to that, um, Richard proposed a, a, a freestanding, I would call it a freestanding screening structure. Um, and and we reviewed that. Um, I think we reviewed that with staff and and uh, and then brought that to the city council in a closed session because it was essentially it was settlement discussions. But um, and then responded to Richard with some feedback saying we we didn't feel like it was tall enough to provide the the required privacy, and that we wanted it to be essentially adjacent to the stairs. Um, about a month ago, when I met with Jennifer, um, she she brought a revised uh, design, 
which, in my opinion, addressed those issues. So, you know, we brought that to the council and discussed it. And that's your that's what you're remembering, I think, also, Ben, is we we took a look at that revised design as well. Um, again, I think from the city's perspective, that's still acceptable. But I know I know Richard had some concerns. And again, I don't want to speak for you on that, Richard, but but that's essentially what is on the table, uh, in my view, to resolve it right now. But and and I, the reason I ask that, and and is when we get talking about the parapet height and all of that, and extending it with you know landscaping and that. In in my understanding of the discussion, we were we were addressing it at the stair level as people were moving up and down that with a, you know, a, a, a more solid uh, elevated screening element that would provide, provide that. So as I, as I go through and we're talking raising parapets and uh, things like that, uh, my understanding and, and the council may see it differently uh, with the with specific to the stairs. So that's why I never quite understood because that seemed like a pretty reasonable and simple uh, adjustment was just some type of screening, something elevated that gave some privacy to the neighbors as, as those were going up and down. Um, specifically to the stairs, I'll, I'll speak on, on that. And again, it's not, not in our ordinance, but, but uh, Richard is correct. Uh, outside stairs in, in many other cities, St. George included, are, are allowed outside the, the setbacks. Uh, in fact, we could, in Santa Clara City, you could build a accessory dwelling three feet off that, you know, off property line if approved. So it's not here. And again, different city, but that I know that because we literally just installed one. So that's an exterior stair that, that, and this is different in the fact that there were some setbacks and survey disputes and things like that, that certainly I can recognize that. As. And I think, I think Ben, that's part of the reason uh, recognizing that was part of the reason that we were willing to go with, some kind of a screening structure, um, as opposed to somehow trying to resolve the fact that the stairs were going to be in the, you know, yeah. I, I think we're, I think we were willing in the compromises that we proposed to accept the fact that the stairs were going to be where they were, right? So, so I guess that would be my my last question on on if, if the screening is happening at the stairs and and on that, what was the reservation on on doing something? Okay, I, I guess as a uh, registered professional architect, I'm bound by some things. Uh, uh, first of all, you have an ordinance that says the tallest property line fence or wall by ordinance is nine feet, unless otherwise approved by the Planning Commission. And from the beginning, when this solution became on the table, so to speak, I said, that's ridiculous. From our standpoint, we don't want to set the precedent of a 17 foot high wall on a property line. So wall, fence, whatever configuration. Uh, the first version we put closer to the wall. Uh, I remember a foot plus, foot nine inches. A second version that was okayed by the by Cody, uh, the new building official, uh, was placed at three foot nine inches. And I'm not sure, but it seemed to us one of the reasons were they kind of had this, that there was a setback of two and a half feet. And if we were farther away than that, that then it could be approved. A uh, problem for us is that it's, it's unsightly to us. It's not just unsightly to us, I believe, and Googlers. It's, 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 it's a really horrible planning and zoning precedent for how you do disputes. So what in effect I believe the city is saying, well, you have a setback issue for a nice, delicate, transparent stair. Why don't you in front of that, closer to the neighbor, place a 17 high foot wall, you know, or screen fence, whatever you want to call it. There are some additional issues about fireproofing that, maintaining it, that are a burden on us. And it's just, it's much more costly to us than any of the other alternatives, including the parapet wall adjustment that we've talked about. So, so I think that's where it's not just I, I'm, more costly now. It's more costly in the future. Yeah, Brock, do you have a, do you have a, one of those pictures that could show that? So, so I, I think 
what you're saying and what I'm understanding or I, what I was thinking are, are, are like different, that. just something that would show that this might work there. Um, yeah, this, this would probably work. Someone have a pointer there. So my understanding originally, so, so originally we, you had proposed something at the, uh, thanks mayor. I'll put that on my, you had proposed something I believe out in here. I, in what we had proposed back, I thought it was simply look, find in that, in the glass railing that runs right along the stairs here, a way to elevate that and screen that, that would, that would provide the screening as, as patrons are, are moving up and down the stair. And maybe I misunderstood that, but I believe that's, when I was communicating that, that's where I thought we were coming back was not a new structure, but something that would give. What we did effectively was move the structure the uh, two and a half feet towards the stair from where it was the first time. We also had to make it taller because as it goes closer, the sight lines, it, you know, it's, it's that horizontal sight line we're trying to still obscure and guessing how tall people are. And so it was more costly. Actually, because the stairs are have a tempered glass railing, we can't attach to them. In fact, we have a hard time even working close to them because they'll break. Well, that's where I thought the recommendation was. These were like freestanding adjacent to the stairs is what I yeah. recall. Yeah, I was thinking it would replace the glass with a, you know, a, a five or six foot more something that would screen, whether it's a metal louvered railing or something that would just provide to where that that activity moving up and down those was screened. I, I understood that's what our discussion was and I may may have misunderstood it, but I thought that was a very acceptable way to to resolve that. I had never yeah. in the discussion didn't realize we were discussing raising parapets and well, just looking at this drawing bin, had we built the stairs in the position they're still in there, had the survey been confirmed where the block wall was, we would have been fine. Well, because it, they would not have then been in the setback. It's the survey later that shows them yeah. to have to impinge on the setback. The That's survey the is the survey of I where the it. deeds fall. And What's that? You don't get to move those. If you want to do property line agreements with property owners, you have the ability to do that and re-record deeds and, and move it over there to where the existing block walls were. But the survey is the survey. So don't infer anything other than that, please. Well, I'm, I, what I'm saying is, had, had, it, had the survey confirmed, which we believed it would, where the property line was, we wouldn't have had an issue. There's fences that aren't on property lines in every city we've ever worked in. That's why you do surveys. Otherwise, you just go out and look at the fences. So I was, I was on one today, Mayor. Yeah. <laughs> Four feet off, and it's the same. But the I, survey is a survey. That's why you do surveys before you do architectural drawings. Mayor. So that you know what you've got to build it. Uh, can I just respond to what Ben said? Because I, I think this is important. Um, I, you're not wrong, Ben, about, you know, your, your thought process there. But keep in mind, from, from back in July or August, whenever it was in, where we wrote a, a letter to Richard's attorney, basically inviting them to make, an, uh, make a proposal. That, that's basically all it was. Make a proposal. Make a screening proposal whether it's extending the parapet wall up or something else, make a proposal. We, we actually did not originate the freestanding yeah. screening. That was, that was the proposal that came back to us when we invited a proposal. And so, yes, we've discussed, you know, couldn't, couldn't there be something attached to the stairs? Couldn't there be an extension on, on the top of the parapet? You know, and I, and I don't know the, the, how realistic those things are, that's why we just said, Richard, make a proposal. And so that's how we got to the freestanding was a proposal was made. We reviewed it. We gave feedback. It came back again. And um, it was a compromise, certainly. Maybe wouldn't have been what, what I would have designed or what a, a other staff members would have preferred. But, but we felt it was a compromise that could work. So I, I guess... Coming on to the council after the fact, there is uh, some issues with the agreements that were verbalized in the approval process that you assume the building inspector had the right to change and not make you adhere to those, which is not the case. 
we are the legislative body. We approved the plan. That was the plan you were to work for, not what the building inspector or your contractor suggested you could do. So to me, the, the whole key is to comply with what you agreed to do initially. Let me just, Danny, let me just add that in the minutes of the 2016 meeting, it states that we will do what the neighbors want and that the time of the building permit, we will have that reviewed by Corey and or Bob Nicholson, Corey and or Bob Nicholson. So it states in the minutes what we intended to do and that's what we did. So it's not contrary to the legislative act, if even by the minutes, not the official action, what didn't happen to, to constrain us in one way or another, but in the minutes it says pretty clearly that I'm understanding that the is going to go to the planning director and the building official it, during the building permit approval process, which we did. And, and it was the approval of the city council that was working with the plan and the suggestion of the seven foot parapet. Well, right. What, okay. I, from my standpoint, okay. I don't know. I know that I have to submit the plans to the building official, to the planning director. I don't know where else it goes. I just know that it was approved. We were issued the permit. If you're saying their error was in not talking to the city council, I guess that's, that's you know, that's something the staff didn't feel was necessary. It, I, it's not something I determined or didn't determine. I just did what I was expected to do. And, and you've worked in this business for 30 years, and that's the way you've worked at every time. You've that's, never had to appeal to the city council on any conditional no, use? I, I, I've had cases where my clients as an architect have sued counties and cities and other places and prevailed in some instances, not all. But uh, I understand who has authority, whether it's the staff or the uh, city council or who. In, the, in our particular case, because of the clause in the minutes of where we thought we'd go, I believe we did what we would have expected to do, and we were approved by the people named Corey Bundy and, and probably Bob at that time. And that's what, we, that's what the minutes say we were supposed to do. I mean, I'm certain that, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, as I recall the motion that was made by the city council, it was... It also included all the recommendations from the planning commission and their recommendation to the council. One of those recommendations was that you meet with the neighbors and that you review the plans with the neighbors. That was a, an inferred condition of that city council motion. Well, based on my understanding and discussion with the neighbors, that that never happened, that you guys never had a meeting of the minds of what exactly this thing was gonna look like. And I'm gonna give the neighbors an opportunity to comment on that as soon as council finishes asking you any questions relative to your presentation. Well, let, Mayor, let me, let me, we did meet with the neighbors. We met in the upstairs foyer uh, outside. Uh, well, for a time, we I like to say all the comments tonight need to be addressed this way. You don't address them, and Tom, and you guys don't address him. You'll get a chance to address council before the decision is made. So direct so, your comments so to council. Why, we stated, Bob Nicholson confirmed, I think, in, your, in the council meeting, that we had met with the neighbors as required, and we had made the accommodation. Well, I, I remember you saying you'd met with the neighbors at the council meeting. I thought that Bob confirmed it, but. Well, I just saying what I remember, because I, I was surprised. The reason I remembered it, it was a surprise because we had no neighbors here for that zone change. And I fully expected neighbors to be here, but uh, you'd represented that you'd met with the neighbors and satisfied their concerns and canceled them forward with their motion. Immediately after I was approached by neighbors who said that had not happened. And so the plan review was going to be important at that point in time. I conveyed that to Corey to make sure that we had the meeting in the minds on the plans. And, and based on everything that I've heard and seen since, uh, that still hasn't happened. And so any additional questions for Corey or for Mr. Kohler? Yeah, I'm curious about, there's 
mentioned in the minutes about a signed affidavit that you had agreed on what to do with that terrace on the southern side with the neighbors. Did that ever occur? In the interim between the meeting, when I said that we could do something, we found out that we couldn't, that it was uh, not possible to do that. The neighbors weren't enumerated by name and the who would sign and who wouldn't and who, who would vote which way. It was not a, it was never in any case, all the neighbors agreeing on all of the objectives. Uh, we accommodated what we could accommodate and we did that the best we could. I think we've explained about our reversal of the stair and making the roof terrace private rather than public, feeling that was a large mitigation of the concerns the neighbors would have. Also explained in some detail about the sight lines uh, relative to the parapet and offered to place the, to increase the height as, as discussed. We, you know, that's what we can do now. Any other questions, council? I'm curious about the uh, screening proposal that you sent us, Matt, I suppose. Mm -hmm. It's dated 2017. Why, so why was this prepared, I guess? The screening proposal that shows kind of the barriers going up the side of the staircase. I think if it's dated 2017, that's probably an error because I'm certain that that wasn't created until last year. Uh, okay. September or something. Yeah, early all of, of last, last year. year. Okay. Do we have... Again, we've got it here. Do we have that that we can put up what was proposed? Um, I have. You've got it. I have it in have, Matt's email. Do you want me to I have, have it? several I hard copies of, just, the, of the most recent proposal. Does it say 2017? Yeah, it does. This, my understanding is this is the, this is the most recent proposal, the one that, that Jennifer brought to me. So I can. Can we. Can you pull that up you off an email or something? To make sure that's what this is. Yeah, if I can get it to Christelle. Christelle can then put it. I'll hopefully yeah. drop it in there. We'll go scan. We can maybe scan it. And... We can share. Okay. Let's see no, go ahead. Yeah, I'll share it right here. Can you email that to Christelle? Christelle. Christelle. She can pull it up on the screen. What's the easiest route to get that, Christelle? For him to email it to you? Or we email that to you, Christelle. Can you put it up? Scan it? There you go, Crystal. Crystal just sent it to you. I don't think that, I think that's the part of That's the part of it. Well, no, it is, it, it, I can tell you in just a second. Okay. It has the wrong date. The, the first one was out against the wall, I believe. If you want to see that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was within a foot to 18 inches of the wall, I would say. That's approximately correct, yeah. So one of the changes between that proposal and this one was to move it closer to the stairs, which was in response to feedback from the city. Yeah. Okay. That, and I, yeah, th this, I may have, I got the first one that was right at the wall and okay. And maybe, and maybe you weren't here. I, when I we missed, discussed it. I may have, so maybe that. I think I missed this meeting. Okay. So uh, this actually is helpful. Okay. I'm up to speed. <laughs> Krista, did that answer your? That was my question. Yes, why it had been prepared in 2017, but but now we weren't going forward with that. Yeah, th this is a, I Richard. That's why I asked on this because this okay. this was the meeting I was not at, but yeah, yeah it helps a lot. So yeah. thanks. Any other questions for Mr. Kohler? You know, here's that side plan. That you. That's the screen plan. Yeah, that's. That was the Is one the, the city one? or that's the one that was just sent. Yeah, the settlement one, right? Yeah. Yes, that's the that's the um, the more recent one. Same one you have in front of you. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Okay, the neighbors were part of this. They're uh, their concerns were noted in the planning commission recommendation. It came to council and then turned into the city council motion. So do you have a spokesman? <laughs> um, 
Just wait till you get to the mic, and then I need your name and your address. I am Jen Cloward. I live at 2550 Vineyard Drive in Santa Clara. Um, gosh, I probably should have been taking some notes so that I could have talked to you about some of the things that I had questions or concerns with. Um, first of all, you're right. We went to the first planning commission meeting when they first proposed the zone change, and I think most of the neighbors were there. Um, the planning commission gave the recommendation that it comes back, you know, that he meet with us as far as neighbors go, and then it would come back to you guys as city council, which I know most of you weren't on the council at the time. Um, so we did, um, we got, a, we knew that we needed to meet with Mr. Kohler um, way back in 2016 on September 8th, we were sent a text from the Kohlers asking, you know, here's a couple of options that will work as far as a meeting with the neighbors. Um, we texted back, different dates, um, nothing was decided. We didn't ever hear from them again until October 11th of that year when he texted us and said he'd be able to meet the following evening. So it wasn't a whole lot of time to prepare, a whole lot of time to, to come up with questions, but most of us showed up there. We um, we met out for a little bit longer than five minutes, but it wasn't for an hour. It was less than an hour that we met with him. Um, we discussed certain things that we had concerns with. Uh, we, we spoke with him um, about a lot of things, but when we all left, we, we didn't feel like anything had been really solidified or that we had come to any real agreements on what we wanted to happen and asked that we could meet again, which was, which was the understanding that we were all under. Um, like the mayor said, you probably wondered why nobody was at that next meeting. It's because we didn't know about the meeting. We didn't know that it was on the minutes. We didn't know that that was um, an option. We thought we would just meet again before this went to city council. The next time that we even heard about this was when uh, Lisa, who works at the county office, saw him there and went and asked him and said, um, you know, like, when are we going to meet again? What's going on? He said, oh, it's already been, been passed. That's how we found out it went to city council and passed for the zone change. We had no, no idea. And so that's like uh, the mayor said, we approached him and said, hey, 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 wait, just a minute. This isn't how we thought things were going to go. Um, and so from that point on, we were just under the understanding um, from the mayor that they would let us know when things were going to move forward. And the next thing we knew, we saw the ground being broken there and had no idea what was what the plans were going to be. We hadn't agreed to, you know, anything that we thought was adequate or fair. Um, I want you to know that the, this project in the beginning excited me. I'm not a St. George native. We have lots of family that comes to visit the prospect of having and in close by was actually really exciting. I thought that would be great. It'd be a great place to send my family, have them be close by. But this has kind of turned into something so much different than what we expected it would be. We, um, I don't even know where to start. I, like I said, I wasn't planning on speaking this evening. Um, the mayor talked a little bit, right? I, I think it was the mayor talked a little bit about the seven foot parapet wall and how he had agreed to that in the minutes. I have the minutes from October of 2016. And it says right on here, Mr. Kohler has modified his original plan to change the proposed swimming pool to an outdoor reflective pool and to extend a wood privacy noise wall, i.e. parapet wall, up to, a set, up to seven foot tall along the south and east edge of the roof on the east building. So that's in the minutes. That's where it was said that it would happen. So I'm not sure how that went from here it is to I don't think I have to do that. We never agreed to it. So I, I see where where it was, we understood that that was what was gonna happen. Um, those pictures that he pulled up a little bit earlier, his little, the fourth one down, could you guys pull that up again? I think that, no, might be the one before that. It was the one where it showed that building with the stairs, the back fence. I think that was, I think I just saw a flash. Can you go up on that one a little bit? What is that on the, on the top of that east building there. Is that another set of stairs? Yes. Because looking at that, that was our understanding of where the stairs would go. I would love to invite you guys to come over and climb up the stairs and look over into our backyards and see what we're, we're dealing with. Can you see into our backyards? We took Denny, he saw it. We took Brock, he saw it. You can absolutely 100% see into our backyard. You can see right into my daughter's bedroom window. It's super invasive. Um, so, you know, our, our concern all along has been privacy as neighbors. This is, we live in a great neighborhood. We've been here for almost 20 years. This is the last thing that we expected to look out into our backyard and see. I think having, if he, Mr. Kohler had met his obligation to meet with us and to really discuss 
what could have gone back there. I really feel like we could have come up with something that would have been beneficial to all of us and, and made for a good neighbor business relationship. I'm not sure that, that that relationship can be salvaged at this point. I we we feel like we've been misled on lots of things. Um, again, like I, I said a few minutes ago, it says Mr. Kohler has modified his original plan to change the proposed swimming to, pool to an outdoor reflective pool. How deep would you consider a reflective pool to be? Because when I looked online, it said between 18 and 24 inches. The pool upstairs is, I think, three and a half to four feet deep. It's a lap pool. Getting on their web page after it was first created, it was, um, and it says on right here, he knows that he's not supposed to build a swimming pool because it, a, reflective, a, a reflection pool was the only thing that he was authorized. On their web page, it was advertised as a pool. I have screenshots of that. I don't think Mr. Kohler ever intended to live up to his agreement of having that as a reflective pool. I think there's just been so many steps along the way that we feel like he's misrepresented himself or not told us what, what really was supposed to happen. We just kind of feel like he's decided what he wants and he's going to do it and we're just going to have to live with the consequences. And I don't think, I don't think that makes for the kind of neighbor relationship that we were hoping for. So that's all, that's all I've got for now. Any questions for the neighborhood group, guys? Maybe not to have you come back up, but have you put, obviously you explained it, there are there specific things, again, because my understanding was it was screening on the stairs. Now it's understanding that we've got that parapet. Uh, you're correct on a reflective pool. It's we We build them all the time up to 24 inches but they are, and there's some safety things for that. So lap pools, we build up four feet. So um, you're, you're correct on that. Um, but what, what would the, at this point of the game, I'd like to know where the neighbors stand on, uh, obviously the relationships strain, maybe be, maybe an understatement, but resolutions that the neighbors would like to see. Um, I'd love to. Oh, sorry, Mayor. Oh, you're good. Younger. That's good practice for <laughs> okay, you. <yeah. laughs> Just need your name and address, Lisa. My name's Lisa Gabler. I live at 2560 Vineyard Drive. And um, once again, I'm in conjunction with Jen. I agree. You know, I don't want them to fail. I, I want it to be successful. It's in my backyard. You know, the little houses up front are cute. You know, it's a quaint little thing. It's fine. But two incidences that have happened in my backyard. You know, we're in our yard a lot, spring and the fall. We have grandkids, we're back there. We're sitting out there one Saturday morning and um, up comes people up their stairs and they stopped when they saw us because they were as startled as we were to see them. They didn't know what to do. So they kind of turned and went down and went back down the stairs. Then a few minutes later, they came back with like four or five people and went up the stairs and they kind of looked over at me again and they're like, hi and I'm like hi you know and so to me it's going to be as awkward for their guests going up and down those stairs as it is for us in our backyard so I'm look, looking out for them I would think that they could would see in their best benefit that those glass stairs you know from me closer to the end of this table away from my fence and we have a fire pit right there is going to be very awkward for their guests as well as it is for us so in their benefit I mean I'm thinking not just for us alone, but I'm thinking for their guests. And it's not their guests' fault that they think they're staying and they're going to go up to a nice pool and they look over and see a family in their backyard. I said, it's not like they're looking out at a beautiful lake or some mountains or something to enjoy this beautiful view up on this rooftop. They're looking in, you know, neighbors' backyards, doing normal neighbor things in their yards. So, I mean, and it's happened twice. So, you know, in our defense, and there's, I'm just saying, and I've told Jennifer that I, Jennifer and I have talked and I said, Jennifer, I, I'm looking out for you guys too. I don't want you to fail. I said, but it was as awkward for your people going up those stairs as it was for us going up and down those stairs. So I would think they, for the benefit of their guests staying at their place and being able to rent their rooms. I mean, living in Southern Utah, if I was going to, coming here on a visit, I'm not going to come spend the kind of money it costs to stay at their place and have a rooftop little thing that I'm up going up and having to look in people's backyards when there's other 
a ton of other beautiful places to stay. So I would think that they would want what would be best for their guests also, not just for us, but because it's awkward for both, you know? So I don't know if that, it's just an experience and I would, I can't really talk to him about it, but maybe hearing it now that he can listen. Thanks, Lisa. Maybe I had, I'd like to ask a question to Richard. Uh, if this plan called for two stairwells, how come there isn't one on the north side? Uh, the plan that had that was had two staircases on both sides was from, from the um, planning approval stage. We at that stage, yes, we had stairs going up from the parking lot direction in both ends. That's what the drawing that was approved. That was what was approved. That was the drawing that was approved. Then again, why didn't we build the one on the north side? Well. Uh, we felt that by baking, reversing the direction of one staircase and bringing the, our, our, ourselves and our guests up, escorted by us, that it was an improvement in privacy. And that was approved by our building people? And uh, Corey agreed. I mean, it's not like that was a unilateral decision that I made. But it was a major change. And yet it was, it was something we did to improve the situation for the neighbors. Without approval, I'm pretty sure. Well, well, <laughs> well I can open it up. I promise. In, in concept, we implemented the plan we got approved. We did it in a better manner than having two public stairs ascending the, to the deck. We have one private stair. And am I, and I'm just trying to remember the, the building plan approvals that I've seen after the fact showed it both ways. Yeah, so Matt's looking that up right now. I believe from what I recall seeing, this is after the fact when we've been going through this process, that the two sets of plans that I've seen are one that showed stairs on both sides and stairs only on the north side. There was never a set of plans that I've seen through this process that showed stairs solely on the south side. And Matt's going through, very, love looking at that through his packet that yeah, yeah I, I'm just so what I'm skimming through is um, this is this is the full set of construction drawings that that I have, which has Corey's signature on it and stamp. So this is this is what I understand was reviewed and approved by Corey. Um, and, and actually, as I look at this, I think it shows it all three ways, just depending on what page you're looking at. That's what I remember. So. You know, and some of these, it shows it only on the north side. Some of it shows, uh, one, it shows only on the south side or a couple of them. Um, and then in others, it shows them on, on both sides still. So it's, it's inconsistent. I, you know. Yeah, if, as a matter of clarification, I might add that the building, building A has a set of plans and in building A set of plans, the stair is only on the south side. And it's shown in the proper configuration related to the lobby. And that's the one the video fly through was done from. But did that set have a separate site plan with it or just the, the building plan? Well, the, the building plan shows the stairs, it shows the neighbor's wall, it shows all of that on the floor plan sheet of the building A plan, along with a th some 3D views that are cons uh, consistent with that. Okay. Now, the depth of the pool was raised here. We did submit a shallower pool depth to Corey. Corey said it had to be a minimum of three foot six inches. We changed to that. And in the same email, when I'm answering the, here's the seven foot wall, you'll see his question is about also the depth of the height of the pool safety wall, he calls it, I think. And then the return is we show it dimensioned at more than three foot six. I'm not sure if it's three foot seven or just what something higher, as he had requested. Is he referencing the the railing around the deck or the actual pool itself? The I've pool never had, I've never been asked. The pool itself, Corey, because forty twos are railing. Yeah, Corey felt that the pool wall itself had to be the same height as a as a commercial railing from the bottom of the pool up. You can see here, this is Corey's is asking about the safety barrier on the reflecting pool, not in, not with the depth, it has to do with the barrier, safety barrier. Is there another email specifically stating the, 
I, I just can't imagine that I, I've never been asked pool depth again safety railings 40. Well if you if it Corey said if it weren't that high you could fall over it down to the ground. <clears throat> the the railing on the pool or the railing on the deck be the railing on the deck wouldn't it? It's the he considered the wall of the pool towards the parking lot to be a railing. Okay. Which which is actually correct. Well, I, I believe that it would, is, and that's why it's changed that way. In the but it wouldn't be the water depth. It's not re re referencing the water depth of the reflection pool. He's referencing the, the railing because it's required by code to be 42 inches. Am I correct there? Yeah. Corey, Corey we had it a shallower depth. Corey insisted on, which correctly, in my opinion as well, that, that was right. And we increased the structure and did that. Holds more water. And we wanted to. Again, again, I don't think he's talking about the water depth. I think he's talking about the safety railing at the edge of the at the edge of the pool at 42 inches. I I'd love to see that email, but I I would well you can see the attachments to the response and they show the height of the yeah. pool wall. Have a question. I'm not sure who I'm addressing it to, so. Just throw it out there. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. Mine is specific to the legislative action that you referenced, Matt, that was taken. Yeah. Um, I did read all the minutes from the both the September meeting and the October, or the June meeting and the October meeting. Um, I do remember I was on the planning commission when this came through. I do remember the neighbors showing up. I don't recall the specifics other than I know there were concerns with the height and the noise and the people looking over in the pool. Um, that was valid. The, the question I have is in the minutes that came to council, the discussion um, about the seven foot parapet wall, um, Mr. Kohler states that it's three and a half foot, but he would be willing to work with the neighbors. It would be their choice. Um, there's no discussion on screening of stairs and the site plan that did come to us did show stairs on both sides of the building so my question is i guess my question is are we asking or did we go back with this the recommendation for the stairs at, at the request of jennifer and whoever brought this design to us mm -hmm. um as a means of trying to appease both issues in one swoop given that there was no discussion of the stairs mike the reason i'm asking is at the time if he had just built the parapet wall to seven feet mm -hmm. i understand there's a survey issue and that's a whole separate issue with the setback but it, the, the legislative approval is there's a seven foot parapet wall with stairs that were approved no screening on the stairs yeah um the, really good question um so if i go back to what i said at the very beginning of the meeting the issues as as I see them are the the parapet wall and the stairs in the setback. So so there's there's definitely some inconsistency. We've talked about that about whether there's one set of stairs or two and then what was approved. But I agree when the city council approved the general site plan, there was there were, it did show stairs on the south side, but but it did not show those stairs in the setback. So again, I think the stair issue was the, was the setback. And so in terms of what we have discussed as a compromise, the screening structure, I think the compromise, part of the compromise from the city's side was, we'll live with having stairs in the setback if, if you'll address the, the privacy issue for the neighbors. So I don't know, if, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's, that's the way I look at it. Any other questions, Council? I, I just, what would you be looking for as far as a resolution? Well, it's been a tremendous financial burden on us to not have the occupancy permit for four rooms uh, in the A building. And those, the occupancy permit of those buildings has nothing to do with either of the two issues, the roof parapet or the stairs. In those my mind, are, it does. Those rooms are sure it'd be approved and the occupancy permit should be released. And That's if it what isn't, I, is there any solution to this? Well, we hope there is. We hope you'll 
So would you consider putting the stairwell on the north side and eliminating the stairwell on the south side? I don't think that's a realistic solution from an economics. Well, you were to do both of them. So this would be actually completing what you originally planned to do. Um, I think by reducing the number of stairs between the planning, the zoning approval and the building permit approval, I think we did what was in the best interest of both ourselves and the neighbors for a security uh, of the deck, the roof deck, the access, and for the patrons, our patrons being escorted by us up the stairs so that they would behave in a neighborly manner. And I think that was a big improvement in both numbers, how many people would or wouldn't go up there, and how they would, how they would comport themselves going up and being up there. This, it becomes a private space that our that we as the owner or our manager, if we're on vacation or whatever, uh, would would uh, occupy. And that deck is a private deck. I mean, it's a private private. It's not the public deck that it was when there were two public stairs going up. I think that's a big improvement. But it wasn't approved. I believe it was approved by Mr. Bundy, as the minutes said it should be. The minutes from the approval meeting specifically say that these issues that were brought up and discussed in the minutes will be uh, approved by Mr. Bundy and or Mr. Nicholson. And with you receiving recommendations from the neighbors, which you agreed to do. Well, and that, uh, that's but probably that's, the biggest that's issue. What, what we did is we prepared, including the fly through video, so that that could be explained to whomever, the TRC, the, may, the mayor, the neighbors. But you and didn't explain I don't know what, Corey has the authority. I don't tell him how to do his job. I, be, I went where I should go and I got the approval that I should have got, that I did get. And it was a valid building permit. And we did what we were required to do. And so Corey I don't suggested think, you. I don't think we, <laughs> I guess I've been an architect long enough. I, when a building official tells me finally what he wants, I yes, I can appeal his decision. And Matt knows at least one case where we went to the Board of Appeals about an insulation matter. And it did come out so well for us. But, but Corey has the authority and we can challenge it, but we usually don't. We usually say, Mr. Building Official, what do you want? And when he says what he wants, that's what we do. The same with zoning and planning directors. We don't, we, what's your ordinance mean? And then when they say we do that, we don't question what the, what they thought the setbacks or interpretation of the setbacks were. We draw what they deem is appropriate. I, there is discussion prior to drawing that site plan uh, post permit, post survey, excuse me. We had discussions with both the planning director and the building official about how could we resolve that? We moved the, I'd say we moved our improvements three feet farther away from the property line wall that we believe was the property line through the boundary of acquiescence doctrine. We still think after 30 years, we, we were the owners of that property. Mayor, can I, can I just ask a couple, well, really one, one question, Richard. Is there any reason that the, that the glass on those stairs could not be replaced with something opaque um, or something that provided additional higher screening so that as people well, are going up and down the stairs? The, that it's a tempered it's, glass stair. So how that gets built is in a factory someplace in California, they build those two dimension and an eighth of an inch, the size they are. There's, I think, five panels. One of them came to our site size slightly incorrectly five times. So yes, it's expensive. And the purpose of that is to make a light, delicate stair. And I think from a privacy standpoint, no one would be sitting on the stairs and peeking over the staircase because the neighbors would see them. And if they were doing something unsavory, we would be informed. Also, it, the transparency seems to me to be consistent with safety. And that's one of what was our, one of our primary concerns with who could access the roof deck. And you know, we especially didn't want teenage boys, 16 years old, going up there unaccompanied. 
and unobserved. Is there any reason there couldn't be something added to the stairs as, as opposed we to replacing the glass? Put a tinting thing on to make it more opaque without destroying the glasses there. And I don't know how that would be a, a large benefit, but we could do, depending on how opaque that is, we can reintroduce some security issues that we're not comfortable with. We'd like to see the people and know that they aren't hiding and doing that they're not the wrong people, the ones that we didn't invite. Okay. Anything else, Matt? With themselves, that should not be an issue ever. Anyway. Anything else? I don't think so, unless the city council has questions for me. Council? Does did we get that drawn? Did we get that on the email up? The the proposed one? You, I think you had it up there. Yeah. Just have the neighbors seen this? Okay. So, so just maybe to clarify and just put it in what's being proposed, and just as uh, after going listening to tell us, and again, I I will share the same sentiment. I. I believe 99% of what's over there is a it's it looks good it when you think of coming into downtown it's it's like I say right or wrong on we we've discussed parking and and other things like that but as far as what's being built in the city uh this is you know for downtown something that I I believe personally great now we're dealing with screening that the two issues again, or screening, what's being proposed is, and this is what I thought when we had talked originally, this was right out of the wall. This has been pulled back to screen the stairs, to hopefully, uh, you know, the guests that are going up and down. And then Mr. Kohler has also discussed the potential of 24 inch, I, I, I agree, not, not doing galvanized up there, but planters that would be on, on that parapet. Uh, whether they're in a bronze that would that would line that parapet that in my opinion would be that that would that would meet the the seven feet that's been discussed um am, am i understanding that uh correctly uh maybe that's is that mr uh, mr Kohler, my, is that is that correct this this is being proposed as well as planters on top of the parapet Sorry. Uh, for tonight's meeting, uh, we've tried. I've tried to confine my. I, although I've answered questions beyond that, tried to confine my comments to just the two issues that Matt started with: the position of the staircase yeah. and the um, height of the parapet wall. Okay. And I did offer a, which I think you're referring to the inches and what we could do with planters and plants on top of the existing 30 inch wide wall, which we always thought we'd do something, but we can do more so that it's more obscure rather than less. Yeah. Okay. Did you get your questions answered? I, I did. I. <laughs> Again, referencing back to the neighbors and the neighbors that are here, and again, I, I'm where they hadn't seen this, and you've spoken on going up and down the stairway. If, um, I mean, I've got in my everyone's got an opinion on how things should look and design, so I won't get into my opinion. But as far as screening the stairway, I, I, I guess I'm more intrigued try uh, again we've got to find a resolution and i think as far as the stairway i can see all sides of communication i think all of us may have a differing opinion on that but it really comes down ultimately to the screening and the privacy and the um on how it's addressed and so i i, I don't know if i'm asking a question of the neighbors or i i just like to know their take on on something like that and something that that has been I'd love it. Would that be all right, Mayor? Come on up, Tommy. State your name and address. Tom Gibbler, 2560 <clears throat> Vineyard Drive. Um, 
I don't know how Mr. Kohler sleeps at night with the lies and the things that come to us. Okay, I'm going to first address the uh, property line issue. When we put our original wall in, we just lined it up with Cloward's wall, which was already in. We didn't survey it. We knew it was on our property, um, but we just lined up with Cloward's. So we had one long wall all along. Okay. I built my shed, my white shop out back in 2001. All right. We didn't put the wall up, the first wall up until probably 203 or 204. So where he's coming up with 30 years that he owns the property, he's up in the night. Because that was all a one big open field behind my house and behind Gates's house. When we decided to put a wall up, we just put one up that was in line with Cloward's wall. So that's how the first original wall. Mr. Kohler got the survey. We didn't. He knew where the line was from the get-go. Okay. He was hoping we wouldn't figure it out. But thanks to Corey Bunny telling Travis Gates, hey, this is your property line here. That was from Corey. Okay. Also, I want it to be known, or a lot of council members may not know, Mark Weston, his contractor, was also on the planning commission. Okay. Ben, you've worked with Corey a lot. Tough egg to deal with, huh? Okay. You don't have to answer, but I know the answer. Okay. How all these things got by is a conflict of interest in my eyes. How Mark Weston being on the planning committee and how Corey Bundy can okay these things, hmm, something's up. Okay, now, uh, we were, the, the plans that we saw with the two sets of stairs, and we were always told the stairs would be on the north side of the building. Mayor, uh, part of the contingencies was mayor said that Mr. Kohler had to meet with us. He did. We met at the top of the stairs. I was one of the three women that were there. And it was, a, I would be shocked if it was over a 15 minute meeting. Maybe a half hour at the very most. We were promised a 3D view from our backyards of what it would look like. Next thing we know, it's all passed. Now, I know the mayor asked Mr. Kohler if he had talked with us. He said yes. He did. He talked with us for a short, short time. And it got passed. When we found that out through my wife's work, we were all dumbfounded. Now, Mr. Kohler mentioned that he was shocked when just a year ago, these things all came about. Well, he wasn't more shocked than we were shocked when we saw the stairs going up on that side of the uh, side of the building. I also, we built that wall behind my house. My house is directly behind this project. We built it seven foot, a seven foot wall we built there for privacy. Unbeknownst to us, Mr. Kohler comes on the other side and adds two feet of dirt. The wall is exactly my height, I'm five four. So most any average person can look right over the wall and into our backyard. If I would have known he was going to add two feet of dirt, I would have added and put a nine foot wall there. From day one, the only thing that we've wanted was privacy. Mr. Kohler has known that we've wanted privacy. We shouldn't even be here tonight. The stairs should be on the north side of the building. There should be a, a, a wall on the south side and east side, at least as he said he would do. Now, another concern I have, this, this reflection pool on top, it's four feet deep. How is the city council or I guess law enforcement gonna enforce this when people are swimming? Because it's supposed to be just a reflection pool. And just looking down the road, they've already advertised as a pool. They're not gonna keep people out of this pool. So how is it gonna be addressed? That was one big specific uh, thing that was brought up in the city council and with us that there would be no swimming pool on top of the, the deck. And we can send it to the reflection pool. We thought, okay, that's fine. But how's it gonna be enforced when people are swimming? That, that's a question I have. I don't think anybody's thought about that right now. So these are our concerns. 
to us, it was very simple. When he was starting those stairs, before he got into those stairs too, too much, he could have put it on the north side. We wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be here at all. But he has fought us and fought us and fought us on that. And subsequently, we're here. And, you know, I, I just, I've said before to some council members, uh, I hope we can get it resolved and not go to other means. Now, I know that uh, Denny has, has been to the top of the stairs, and I'm not sure who else, but Mr. Kohler invited you guys to come by. And I would like you to come by and hike those stairs and see. Well, we wanted privacy. It was like rubbing salt in the wounds when we saw a glass staircase going up the side. And how does that fit the pioneer theme? What, what staircase have you ever seen in a pioneer house that has inch and a half thick glass going up the staircase for their own? It doesn't fit the pioneer theme at all, in my opinion. I appreciate you guys listening to us. Appreciate what you guys have, have done. Um, I, I know that we can't believe one thing that comes from Mr. Kohler. It's just been one lie after another lie after another lie. And I won't, well, I better shut up on the- Just the now the, answer the question Ben asked you. Is the screening acceptable on that plan? I, my wife and I have to talk about that. That's, I, I, it's better than glass staircase, yes. Okay. It doesn't pick, the reason I have you do that isn't to be mean, it's just that the minutes don't pick up the, the noise. I, we'd have discussed it. It is better than the glass staircase, yes. Okay. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, but there's nothing on the front of the staircase. At the top of the staircase, you can see clear through gates. The reason why I invite the, the city council to look at it, uh, I have a seven foot wall and these stairs are so close that I have about a, two to three foot planter right next to the wall in my backyard. You can see every bit of it. You can look right down the inside of, of the wall. And all we have ever asked for is just some privacy. That's all we've asked for. And it's almost like uh, having salt rubbed in the wounds with what he has done. And, and uh, I don't know. And frankly, I would be their guest's worst nightmare if something doesn't happen. They're not gonna enjoy going up to the top. So I uh, thank you guys for your time and uh, hope we can get it resolved. Thanks, thank Tom. You. Mayor, <clears throat> Mayor, can I address the pool uh, question that Tom raised? Because uh, we haven't talked about that yet. So the pool issue was one that we had, that the city had originally raised in our letter back in May of last year. Um, and we did become aware that, that the website advertised it just simply as a pool. Um, and so, uh, uh, in that exchange between, between myself and Richard's attorney, um, Richard agreed that they would, <clears throat> that they would post signs at the pool, that it was not for swimming. Um, and, um, and they also, uh, at that time changed the website. So it's de described as a reflecting pool on the website. Now, I believe I haven't checked that recently, but I believe it is. So. That's why that has not been raised as an issue um, from the city's perspective, because we felt like in the larger compromise that that would that satisfied the concerns about the use of the pool. So I don't know. And, and I know that might not satisfy you, Tom, but that's. How will we address it? <laughs> <laughs> but still, how will it be addressed when it, the signs don't work? Uh, do we call the police or do we call a city council? What you know that what do we do? It's a good question, and and the only answer I can give you is there's a there's a lot of things that that are that are hard to enforce, but we but we still you know the reality is we we just have to deal with them, and so maybe it's not the ideal uh, solution. But, but it's one that was offered and, and the city said in the larger context, yes, that would be acceptable, so. Okay, council. Well, is it still possible, Mr. Kohler, that you can move the stairs to the north I, side? I think it's probably best if you address the council. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So my Thanks. question is, um, 
I could, you know, the, is there a possibility that the stairs can be moved to the north side? I think like that was the same question you asked, right? Um, Where they, because like I, I mean, like I stated before, it would be in their guest's best benefit. It would be in everybody's best benefit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And because like I said before, we don't want them to fail. We don't want a failed business in our backyard. The houses up front are cute. Everything's great. It's a cute little thing, but it's just, yeah. Anyway, so on the north side, I mean, I can, I don't know why it couldn't be done. I mean, you add on, people add on, people add stuff to their homes all the time. So anyway. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Well, Mayor, I can give my comments if you'd like. Shoot. Um, so I was on the council when that was passed. I was very young on the council and was leaning a lot on the other council members to understand what was going on. But I do remember thinking like that'd be an awesome spot to like jump over a fence and swim upstairs. And if I was a kid, I remember thinking that in the meeting, like, and that's why when there was a discussion of the seven foot wall that, that seemed like that would really work, like that would, that would keep the privacy between that building and the neighbors. And so um, I remember that seven foot wall being super important on the South end and it wasn't on the plans that were presented to us. It was just the East side, but I remember putting on the South side really assured in my mind that that would be okay. Um, and I agree with what they've done in terms of turning the stairs the other direction and making it a private entrance that that alleviates even more of that pool jumping possibility. So I, I think that's a good change they made. Um, in terms of the setbacks, you know, I've always viewed setbacks as a way to maintain the privacy. And so regardless of how we've ended up here, there's a structure that is super, super close to the, the actual surveyed line. It sounds like it's even closer than 10 feet. I know that happens sometimes that buildings get built a little too close to each other. But then there's an, another structure added onto it that makes it even, and we're talking, it's like, the stairs are four or five feet away from the property line, according to this. And so for me, you know, looking at this, this appeal, we have to mitigate that somehow. And I think the city is proposing this. I'm, I'm open to other ideas of how we would mitigate that being in the setback so close to the property line. Um, That's what we have in front of us. Um, but I would also like, I would love, Matt, if you could kind of respond to the appeal that we have here is to just give the CO because of his, of his arguments. Were those arguments valid based off of your expert opinion, or should we be looking at other options? Yeah, I'm happy to respond to that. So again, I, it, it's very closely related to what I talked about before. Uh, with respect to the distinction between a legislative action and, an, and administrative actions. Um, and I, I don't dispute that, that the citation from the building code that Richard presented is in the building code. But the issue is the building code doesn't even become relevant until you have a legislative action that, that zones a property uh, to be developed under the building code um, and again, the issues that, that I stated at the beginning of the meeting are issues that really are related to the initial approval of the, the zoning, uh, along with the site plan, which is incorporated into the zoning because this is a PDC zone. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's great to say, well, you know, the building code provides this appeal process when we're not happy with the decision of the building official, but the building official's authority to even issue a CO is based on the legislative action that preceded it. And so, you know, again, I, I acknowledge there's a legal argument to be made there, but, um, you know, my, my advice to the, to the city continues to be, this is, a, this is an issue that has to be resolved by the city council because it's a zoning issue primarily um, and and that's and that's that's the bottom line for me you know it and and maybe think about it this way 
let's say let's say we did agree to convene a um, a, a building code appeal authority to to hear Richard's appeal. Um, are are they going to are they going to be able to decide to uh, waive a condition um, that that was was originally set by the city council that that the city council's original decision was based on? I just I don't even think they have the authority to do that. So that's that's the basis of my uh, wh why I've recommended continually to to Richard's attorney when he was represented and and to him recently that this is where he needs to come to to resolve this not to not to some you know ad hoc um building code appeal body they just don't have the authority to resolve these issues and i and again i acknowledge that he may not agree with that and he said that he doesn't agree with that but that's where we are yeah. Okay, so my next question is um, in terms of what law applies here. So in our code, I believe this was put in in 2020, where if there's a project plan amendment, if it's no more than 5% of, of certain changes can go to the planning commission, they can approve it and they, they go with their plan. If, it, if it's more than that, it has to come to the city council. But where this was, this all happened before 2020, what was what is the official approval process that has to be followed in this case? Well, I, and I think the simple answer is this was this was a decision and conditions that were set originally by the city council. The city council has the power to to reconsider or to modify, and that's why I think it's appropriate for the city council to consider this. Okay. So, but yes, it, it does it does predate that provision in our code. So. And so what we're being asked to do is basically amend the original PD zone right now. Is that correct? Or to modify a condition of your original approval. Yeah. And, and I guess I should be clear, that's, that is one way to resolve it. You know, another way uh, and, and another decision that you could make is just to simply say, we don't think there there's anything to resolve. This is these are the require requirements, or to say you know we there's some compromise that we're willing to accept. Um, so I think there's a variety of options available, and I know that doesn't make it any easier, but but I think that's the case. Okay, and I guess I would just add, you know, our current code talks about setback and height minimums and maximums listed can be a little bit fluid um, according to the city council, basically, you know, based on plans presented to us, you can squeeze a few things here and there to make the project work better. So I feel like there's that leeway for the council. Um, I don't know if we're all comfortable actually doing that, but um, that is in our code. And so again, I kind of go back to, I think that wall needs to be seven feet. Like that's, I left that meeting with that wall is going to be seven feet and sure you can add planners to it, but those can be taken off so easily by the next owner or whatever. It's not permanent and it won't even be seven feet, even with those on it, according to the dimensions given to us. And so I feel like that seven foot thing is kind of a, I'm stuck on that. And then if this is in the setback, like for me to be okay to change the plan, then there needs to be some sort of mitigation to make it work. And that, that's kind of where I said, I do agree. Like we approved a plan with stairs on both sides and they weren't screened, but we also anticipated they wouldn't be in the setback. So now if they are, what do we do? And that's where I feel like there has to be a mitigation. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Anybody else? Council? <clears throat> well, again, I think going along with what Jarrett said, it's a, uh, an issue that we need to deal with uh, that not just because of the privacy for the neighbors, but because of the submitted plan and the acceptance of that plan and then building according to the plan submitted, regardless of the discussion which they may have had with the building 
inspector or the builder from the planning commission, the plan that was submitted and approved by the city council is the one that should be continued to be enforced. And uh, the plan that I see not being part of the council at that time is there is stairwells everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it could be on two sides, one side, uh, but legitimately it was to be determined with the help of the neighbors as to what was going to go in there. And that ha did not happen. And I think at this point we determine if there is a solution, I think it needs to be uh, suggested by the builder owner rather than by the council. In my mind, the council needs to continue to hold to the zone and to hold to the decision which was made was, was to build according to plan. Okay. I guess the only thing I would add is I think for me, it's really going to be sticking with the legislative action that was that was taken. Um, if, if we're going to look to an appeal to the condition that was set, I, I get there wasn't a formal per se condition met. It doesn't state that in the, in the motion that was made. But I, I do agree that in the discussion that was had, there was a condition for privacy. That came up in planning commission. It came up in council minutes that I read. Um, and so I think for me, that condition needed to be met. The stairs a separate issue for me. Um, but the, the privacy wall to work with the neighbors to a choice of up to seven feet is a condition that appeared to, to need to be met for me based on the legislative action. My thought. Krista or Ben, anything to add? Mine's probably just more of us in listening to that. I agree with what's been said. I think there is a, you know, we, we approved or, you know, plans that, that did show stairs. So I, I think, but, but Lena's right. The approval was based on addressing privacy. And uh, in, in my opinion, it comes down to, like, again, maybe I'm, I probably shouldn't be offering up, but I'm going to is really, it comes down to the options of like Jarrett said, you raise, you raise the parapet and provide the seven foot of screening. That was, that was, uh, you know, and how that's done. You're right. You know, planners could be taken off there, you, you know, but, but as far as meeting that seven foot of screening, um, or the other option of, you know, I, I think the, the, the other option in going with that is saying, okay, would, would the, the council, I mean, is a better solution moving the stairs and leaving the, you know, which solves kind of both things outside of it doesn't address the legislative action that was, I think, intended that, to get that to seven feet regardless. So we would be going, okay, here's a compromise. We're not going to mess with the building. Uh, you've got two options. You provide the seven feet of screen that was addressed or, or simply relocate the stairs. Again, I agree. There's, there's plans that show both stairs, one stair. Uh, the setbacks are a separate talk, but, but I, I do think it could be resolved in one of those two. And, and certainly in listening to the residents, that uh, seems like something that may work for, for both parties on that. Now, the applicant could look at that and go, you know, which one's better to be met and, and look at the cost on that. But ultimately I've looked at this all as screening as it's been just a privacy issue. I think that's been shared. Um, I think that's what the attempt is um, and then how to, you know, how to address that. So I think that's really kind of how I look at this. Kristen? I, I agree with what's been said and I'd like to see kind of some buy-in and cooperation with the owners so that, or the neighbors so that they um, get the privacy that they were expecting based on what was approved. And if we could go see the site, I'm interested in doing that. I don't know how that is coordinated, but I'd like to. Yeah. 
Mayor, I, I know this came up even that meeting back then, like holding a developer to meeting with citizens is always kind of a tricky thing, right? Because no one will ever be totally happy either way. And what's a meeting to a developer isn't necessarily a meeting to a citizen. Like that's always been a minefield, I feel like. And so even like approving something tonight based off neighbor feedback seems really tricky, yeah. unless I'm reading that wrong. Well, and if it helps, um, maybe it won't, but if it does, um, I don't think you're any under any obligation to take action tonight. Um, you know, if the council wants essentially the prior decision to stand as is, I, I think you just, no action is accomplishes that. If you want to give direction uh, to, to me um, in, in continuing to talk with uh, Richard to try and resolve this, I'll, I'll take any direction that you have to give. Um, if you want to take a more formal action to modify something, you can do that. Um, so I, I think you have several options available to you. Mayor, my, own, my only concern with just deferring back is I think it puts us right back where we've got a, you know, we've got a homeowners that expect privacy per what they thought was being approved. We've got a contract or a owner that's obviously looking to get a resolution to get, you know, we're in, yeah, to get CO. And so I think we, in my opinion, we need to find something um, for, for both sides here to, to, resolve this and again screening at a, a, a is really where it comes down to and and maybe it doesn't happen we we have the answer tonight but at least some direct because it would be good i i have not been over and 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 walked up that i, I you know i understood what what was intent you know what we're trying to accomplish and you know the first time this came to us i i really i thought this was going to be a much simpler uh, simply putting something that screened that stairwell and it's turned into be a little more than that. But I, I, I don't believe we're far as a, of all the parties to get this resolved to where um, this can get put be, behind Mr. Kohler can, uh, they can run their business and the neighbors would be, would be happy. And I just, I, I think if we revert back to where we, the stance we took, I, I think it only muddy. I, th I just think it forces both parties into a corner where it, uh, it's going to feel that, you know, attorney, uh, you know, and I say that on a thing, I just, I just think it puts us in a spot where nobody feels like they win and have to take the ultimate uh, course, which nobody's going to win in this. So if, if I might, yeah. <clears throat> one solution that we had proposed uh, that uh, hasn't been heard uh, while, while the privacy physical screen wall, in my belief, is bad precedent from planning. It's over the nine feet maximum. It, it just, it isn't a good solution for us, whether it's attached to the building or away from the building farther, is really doesn't matter that much. It is, for us, it doesn't work, okay? It costs quite a bit of money. Uh, we've already spent some of that. Uh, on engineering and on the attorney, uh, which we could have more productively spent another way. The legal way that for me works, but hasn't been uh, even considered, is we can in the space between the stairwell, uh, staircase and the walk wall, we can plant uh, plant material. We can plant, uh, let's see, uh, Italian cypress closely, and that will create privacy. It isn't immediate, but it would happen reasonably soon, depending on the size trees we select. We can also plant an, uh, bamboo. Bamboo grows faster. It's, it's available. It's, uh, uh, we have to purchase it at the correct time of year to get large enough plants that, that, that will grow quickly. And they, they don't undermine the, uh, the uh, footing of the existing wall. The third solution, which is preferred by my wife, is a Carolina cherry, laurel, sometimes called, and it's an evergreen. We can make an evergreen hedge approximately two feet wide that would grow over time. It's probably of the three, it's probably the slowest to arrive at like a 16 foot height. 
but it gets to about a 12 foot height, depending on the plant we plant quite quickly. It addresses the issue, but it's not, it's not a violation of the code that it's an architect, it's landscape material. It's a lot like what I proposed to get the seven foot high thing on the, on the wall, on the parapet. We would be willing to do both, although probably if we solve the, the, the hedge of a, of a plant material to the, the height we want, and it looks like it's 16 to 17 feet from our uh, datum on our side of the fence. It, Tom's right that it, there's a difference because of the fill. We had to get drainage back to the low spot, so we filled that corner. I'm just wondering if that's something that you could at least give me a, a reading on, because I think that's a reasonable solution uh, that we'd be willing to invest in. Well, in my opinion, it, it doesn't, again, we, we don't use, you know, softscape is what we'll call it, planting in that, because it, there is, you know, the way it grows, it dies, it, you know, it just on that, I, I do think a combination of it would, would certainly, uh, you know, when you refer to the nine foot wall, which is this, my, in, my understanding was it was something that could attach to the stairs and be a, basically a seven foot railing that would follow the stairs up just like, uh, and that's, yeah, that is. yeah, something like that, but, but literally just something that, that followed the stair line, wrapped the corner and provided the screening. I, I've just looked at this going, boy, that just solves it very easy uh, you get a metal guy that comes in it's a powder coated material it runs up maybe the carolina cherries are a, are a softening agent to the neighbors that help with with noise and that it's a, a combination of that but i uh, the nine foot i i just thought it would be something that would literally attach to the, the structure that's there that, that could be uh just aesthetically it could wrap that corner that would resolve uh, you know looking down in, into the it just seemed like that was a very quick um you know got rid of the glass rail and and i don't know i guess that and that would just keep a combination following up that and the screening but um anyway i i, I don't i like the i i like the planting material as an option but not as the primary option i like it as a secondary softening agent that just provides a buffer uh between that and that's where we use a, a lot of it so certainly you know, great ideas there. I just. Uh, a couple things to address. Uh, <clears throat> we've planted bushes on our side that are growing, but they'll never, and you can't put anything like we're talking that can grow high enough. You guys got to understand there's a major power line right there that I have a question if the stairs are even too close to it for coat. You've got a major power line. What keeps the pool guy's stick from hitting that power line? I mean, it's very easily within reach of the of the uh, pool stick. Uh, an idea that we just mentioned, we'd have to discuss it more, but uh, an, an option that we would uh, maybe take a look at is move the stairs to the north side. That's 90% of the issue. And maybe not have to do the full seven foot wall all the way around, but have the stairs on the other side. What we're proposing here, guys, does not benefit Clowards at all. Because coming down the stairs, you got their whole view and you also got Aiken's whole backyard with the, when you're coming down the stairs. So unless there's a roof on those stairs to make it kind of a tunnel, so once you start up, you, uh, you can't see out, uh, it's, it, it's helping us, the Googlers, um, unless it's wrapped around the front, it's not helping Gates's. So um, to do like Ben is saying, we, it definitely has to have a roof on it to solve the issues with all the neighbors. So in my opinion, the simple thing would be move those stairs to the north side like we were originally told that they would be. And that was completely what we always anticipated. And maybe not have to do the wall around I don't know what you guys call it. The, yeah, the parapet. The parapet yeah. wall. Yeah. Now we'd have to discuss some more, but that's an option that I could see as being a big win-win for everybody. He there wouldn't be any expense. It couldn't be too much expense to put those stairs on the north side of the wall of the 
of the building. Thank you. Well, okay, council. So is there any consensus? The only consensus I was gathering was make sure you got the seven foot screen wall in place. And the last option kind of took that off the table if you move the stairs. Um, May I suggest a, a consensus among us is that we'd like to solve it. We'd come up with a resolution that would be advantageous to both the developer and to the neighbors. And to me, uh, <clears throat> we could suggest something, but it's his pocketbook. And uh, to me, I, I think that he understands where we're coming from. Uh, and if there's a solution that he can deal with, and, and Thomas suggested one, I think uh, that would be workable. Uh, but again, it's not my pocketbook. And so I, I, would, I would like to leave it with Matt to deal with Richard on uh, a basis of trying to figure out a solution for it and then bring it back. But I don't know how the rest of them feel. Well, Mayor, the, the only reason I, there's two parts to this and that was the only reason I, I threw it out because Lena's right. We really from a council, we, we could, I believe say, look, just follow the seven foot, raise the parapet. And I think the council has the right, I think the council would have the right to do that. The stairs, I think the argument could be made that they're outside stairs and that, but, but for screening, I think we would have that right based on the minutes, based on the intent, based on everything that was said in, in that. My reasoning in, in talking on the stairs was saying, okay, if in fact that's where the council has the ability to really, we, I, I think we could safely say that was something we will, we will require and, and follow that and, and well, that, that's going to have a, an expense, uh, you know, to raise those parapets and do all of that. So that's where, okay, if the neighbors are, are, are open to look, if that stair moved, leave the parapets there, get that over there. It, it may be if, if we came back and said, raise everything to seven foot or, you know, moving the stair may simply be from a cost that, uh, uh, aspect sixes i i don't know that but just speaking on that it, it and that was why i say i don't think as a as a I don't, I don't believe as a council we could come back and say we're going to require those stairs to be moved i just don't believe based on what was said we could require seven feet which for, in my opinion is going to cost equal or more money to get that to that which so if that option's there it's probably the compromise that, that wins for everybody that says you know, here's what we, based on my, all the ordinances, we can do this, or we look at this other option that, that gets that, that hopefully quickly would get uh, the, the property open and rented. And, and so that's, when I say that, I, I wanted to clarify that. That's my, I, I don't want to come across and say, hey, that's why I would require that it get moved because I, I don't think that's fair on our part. But under the circumstances, I think it's equal or less to the applicant solves solves both issues and you gets it done i think in a in a quick manner i mean even looking at these screens uh there's time that goes to that and on all that and i haven't looked at how things are attached and all of that and certainly recognize that there are some work there but that i just wanted to clarify that for the council that that would be my position on that and where where i think i would i would stand can i comment on that and um Definitely appreciate that that uh, frame of reference, Ben. The one thing I would point out, and I, I don't want to speak for Richard, so if if I you know if I misrepresent, please tell me. But um, I suspect that one challenge of relocating the stairs is that it I think it eliminates the option to have this the access to the stairs be private because of the configuration of the building. Um, so if you if you relo relocate the stairs to the north side of the building, um, 
it, it's a different access situation. The only reason I bring it up is because it just hasn't been brought up yet. So, and you're, I think you're that's, correct. Yeah. Put it out on the street and then, yeah. you know, 30 years ago or 40 years ago, Tom Goobler's sneaking in and swimming at night. I'm just saying, you know, I know how those things work. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm understanding that there's, there's, uh, looks like a delay that you're participating of some kind. I'd say, okay, to make a decision or get more information or whatever. Is there a possibility that we can have the occupancy for the rooms, not the roof, not the, not the parapets or not whatever there? We are willing to do what I said on the parapets. We're willing to do that to satisfy that condition if that's acceptable. We think it's a better than just making the wall go straight up. The, the plant materials in the pots, we'll call it a solution. Uh, we understand you're ambivalent about the stairs, although Ben has a position that he expressed, but could you, could you give us relief on the occupancy so that we can close our loan? It's, that's a very important financial hurdle for us to go. We would keep the, what happens on the roof still in abeyance. We'll still need to come before you to get permission to use the stairs to do the parapets, whatever you say, if you're starting to want to table it, it just would help us. And I wonder if you can find the justice and the sentiment of doing that. Thank you. Council. So that would prevent the occupancy of the roof and any use on the stairs, but allow the rental of the units, the four units. I've, I've spoke a lot, but I, I've, cause I've thought a lot about this. I would love to see something written and signed as to what's going to happen. Um, and I think that could be very quickly I, because you're right. There is, a, there is going to be a time delay in whatever resolution's done. Um, from my position, I, I've thought about that. I, I, my thought was if we could get something agreed to, knowing that it may take three or four or five, six months to get all that done, but we, I, I, I think it, that would be the only caveat as I'd like to have something agreed to that, that we have an understanding of when that, what's going to happen and, and a, a time frame. And I would have no problem with that, Mayor. And, and for context, I'll just point out that the settlement agreement that's been proposed actually does that exact thing, but with this, this design so you would just so modify the, the settlement agreement and remove the provision on the design but state that well it has to be done but i think what i'm saying is the settlement agreement was an attempt to do exactly what ben is saying it defines what's going to happen gives them a time period to complete it but lets them have their certificate of occupancy now or when the agreement is signed and that was i'll be honest that, i i think that was a pretty big concession on the city's part but did that still prohibit the use of the roof and the stairs? It did in the meantime. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, so that is basically on the table with, with this design. And I realize we may not want to go with this, but so what I'm saying is I think that's very possible, but I do think, I do think we need to understand what needs to happen because if the agreement is, we'll give you the certificate of occupancy and you just can't use the roof and we'll figure it out. It's not going to get figured out. You can probably opinion. still put a time limit on it or a bond. I'm, I'm, I'm not willing to have a guarantee, just a guarantee, a written guarantee. I want some funding set aside for whatever engineering needs to be done, whatever building needs to be done. The money needs to be committed either by bond or by cash to cover the costs if they uh, can't complete what they agree to do. Jared? What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> That's my overall, overall view. It's uh, basically oh, it's allowing a the of, CO to use some yeah, of the units. Okay. I apologize for interrupting, but I, I understand that you're reluctant to not 
have a design and company a settlement agreement. I understand that. But the value to us of finishing the roof and the pool is great enough that we're not going to just not do anything. That is a that's that makes us money in terms of revenue. So we will do that. I we really would prefer that we could occupy the rooms, which don't seem to be an issue for the issues you talk about, the stairs or the parapet, and that we could separate the occupancy of the rooms, which allows us to close our construction loan and gives us time and energy to put the money where it belongs, finding the resolution. I know that you're uncomfortable with no resolution drawn, but I think that I, in listening, I think I hear stuff. I probably will want to contact planning or council members individually to get a little more direction on what that should be. But I, I'm starting to get some information, that, but I don't have enough. And I don't think you have enough from what you're saying or what I'm hearing. But I would like the relief of allowing us to close a construction loan. It's very important to us. It's been since August. We, this is our first hearing, really, where we can bring that up. And it, it's just a real burden. Is there money in your, your long-term loan to cover the expenses on the roof? Uh, we've been funding above the loan amount since July, out of our pocket. We're able to do that, but you know, closing the loan will really help us to have funds to proceed in a, a, a good manner. We don't want to, in the end, be so tied to what's happening, especially as the potential for interest rates to rise continues. We're probably talking from what we could get now. It might go up $2,000 a month for a payment. We have to have that and have money to to make the improvements that we have to do. And we're doing that beyond the loan at this point in time. I probably shouldn't have told you that, but, but that's the real situation. We're but is there, a, is there funds available that you could do like Councilman Drake's asked for with either a bond or set aside some cash? I, I believe there are. So that could be worked into the agreement? Could be worked into the agreement if it's, if it's necessary. Okay. All right. So I, I think I need to say this and and um and then i'll leave it but uh, because i i'm willing to do whatever the council wants to do but i am concerned about about signing a settlement agreement that does not have a specific direction as to how the the real issues are going to be resolved you know so so a timeline we can set a timeline but let's say just to pull a, a timeline out of the air let's say we sit a, set a six months timeline to say that we will agree to some resolution within six months, Richard will post a bond for a certain amount, you know, as as security to to motivate him to come back and work with the city. In six months, we're right back where we started, because we'll be back here again talking about well, how do we how do we resolve this? Now, if if that's the direction we want to go, then then I I'll I'll structure it however the council wants it to happen, but just know that. That's not a solution. That is a kicking the can down the road. Well, what I suggested was that we have the engineering and costs so that we're not shooting at a blind squirrel. We know what they're going to do, and that's what they're bonding. Problem for. is, we still don't know what. Yeah, that's the problem. We don't know what they're going to do. So, but that would be part of the solution. Sure. Well, and that's why I said that's what this agreement that has already been proposed does. With this design, which again, we don't have to do this design, but but it was specific to this design, so we knew what they were going to do. So, again, uh, a, would you be willing to approve the agreement as it's presented with the option to come back and substitute the design? Um, if you come up with something better than what you've already come up with, <laughs> yeah, you can bring it back and substitute it out. Well. I think that's an improvement. I think the biggest thing on us, are we getting the occupancy permit? Well, yeah, but with that, if you sign the agreement, the agreement provides, provides the, you the occupancy, occupancy permit so when it's signed. You're, what you're saying is we should sign for this design, mm -hmm. even though I hate it, 
doesn't work for me. I think it's a bad precedent. Or we'll give you the ability to substitute it out. Design, which is complete. From what Ben yeah. said, there seems but to be can, a direction that we could go that sure. might a period of time be more uh, well, and here's, here's, palatable. And here's what I'm thinking. Big deal, but the aesthetics are even more important. That's my is it, these guys say it's better than what they got right now. So they've moved. You accept this, we get an agreement that lets you move forward with your CO after you sign the agreement and put the bond or whatever it is in place. And then that lets you come back with something. You've heard the discussion now. You kind of know where the council is. Well, we have flexibility for a period. You could come back for a period of time. Sure. It has to be built in six months. Exactly. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to commit right now this minute, but. If I looked again at the agreement correctly. I think council can take no action tonight. The agreement is in your court. So yeah. you can sign that agreement anytime. But you're say, suggesting an amendment that would allow a variance in the design. Yeah, all you would do is come back and yeah, we could we could out the agreement. He I could very easily, language. yeah, I could very very easily add that language. Now I do want to clarify because Denny has talked about a bond. The current agreement does not require a bond to be posted. Did it have anything for the cash in lieu of the cost? It did not. It didn't. Well, I think the discussion was helping them to have the cash yeah, to get the idea the was so they could, use, they could apply they the cash to get this done as soon as possible. But I don't know. I, don't know. I, mean, I express this to Matt. I mean, a little bit of the concern is on having the chance to modify is if there's a six month window and he comes in in the, the six month and I won't, won't, wants to change it, then how much further down the road are we then he needs six more months well, I to think, design and build and- I think he's agreed to do it in six months. He'd have to have his new plan in here in two. Yeah, we, we would, we, if we had a new plan and I will ask if I can meet individually with you and show you some concepts, maybe bounce something off because I just feel that the one we've got is not optimal. For a lot of reasons. What was the objection to the to the agreement? Was it the plan? This is that why you didn't want to sign? Uh, there, there's some other provisions in the agreement, waiving all claims and stuff. That at this point, I I'm very I'm very nervous about because if we do this, and then in what happens, we take this design, any design, we'll take it back to the planning department and the building department and get it approved. And it'll have to meet specifically all of the requirements that they impose on us. This plan may be unapprovable. Yeah. It just, all the, all the, all the agreement does is give me permission to go to the planning department and make my best argument of why I can do something 17 feet high. And I don't think that particular provision flies in a public hearing in the planning commission, another one back to you. And I may have to go to the historic district commission additionally, because we've been annexed to the historic district. Go back and which, yeah. which is a very burdensome path with something that I I think those bodies will say no. And so yes, we can try, but it we might be just a it's it's not in my mind that height and in those locations is is maybe not provable even if we have an agreement to approve it from you. It sounds to me like there's more in the agreement that, than just the plan substitution. It's a problem. Well, there be more to work out. So um, just to address the, the one objection you raised, Richard, on the mutual release of claims, um, that provision is one that is pretty typical for a settlement agreement. It basically is it's a way of wiping the slate clean, essentially both sides saying, when we sign this settlement, we're, we're leaving the past in the past. That's really all it's meant to do. Um, it doesn't affect claims going forward. Um, now, I do want to just emphasize that to Jim's point that he was making, which may not have got on the, on the record, any approval of an alternative design would come to the city council. That would not be a staff decision. Um, so, so just would have to make to that back clear here to a public hearing. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry. I think, I think you know that it has yeah, to I think to I the legislative that. body. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the problem. You know? Yeah. We, we, so de we're, that's we're not going to agree to that particular design. I don't think it's necessarily 
through the, all the steps that I think we have to go through approvable. And I think if we release the, the claims, I'm just worried about the, the pickle we could end up in in not six, but two, two months, three months, however long it takes to run that gauntlet. Well, well let me just ask, Cody, you, you're familiar with this design. Are you prepared to issue a building permit on this design? Yes. So this design is not an issue. Cody's already reviewed it. The settlement agreement says that when you sign the settlement agreement, he would issue a building permit for this design and issue the CO for the building. So those are not issues in my, in my view. Um, now, if, if you're gonna bring back an alternative design, it's gonna have to go through a process. Um, well, does it, this certainly. one have to go through the same zoning approval process? It's been approved. That's, that's why the settlement agreement is waiting to be Without signed. Without a public hearing? That's what I'm having is over the height limit. It's not a, it, it's not a, it's not, it's not a wall under our ordinances. Well, I, I, Richard, you're, you're, ar you're, you're arguing against yourself here. I, I'm saying. I understand, I understand <laughs> the position there, but I'm worried that's where it goes, gets into the release all claim stuff. I, and I'm saying I to you, I'm saying to you, it's already been reviewed. So this, this dude is an this arbor. Is ready Does that make you feel better? An arbor. <laughs> uh huh. Then you well, can introduce and, your granary to it. And that's a good concession. And under the ordinance, we have the wall can exceed that when it's on your property. We we just approve that under a wall ordinance has to be approved by the city council. Okay, so it's already. But the point is the point is if if you're bringing back an alternative design, this design is not an issue. If you want to bring back an alternative design, it's going to go through a process. If you know it's got to come to city council. If there needs to be a building permit issued, you know Cody would do his thing. Um, but this design is not an issue. This is ready to this is ready to go. We're ready to issue a building permit on this. So I just wanted to be clear about that. Um, and and I'm, I think we can do basically what is being discussed, which is to take the existing settlement agreement to add a provision that that within the six months, which I think currently the deadline is to have this built within six months, within six months, come back with an alternative design that can be approved and built within that six month period, unless we wanna change that. Um, but I, I'm not sure I have clarity yet on the bond issue. Cause I, Danny, that was your concern. Well, it's still my concern because if there isn't any money set aside to take care of it, there is nothing that ties him to that end result other than other than a lawsuit for breach of contract. Right. Which and is essentially what we would have. the city a lot of money to do that. To me, if, uh, you know, a, a bond, I don't, you know, you're talking a $20,000 bond. He can do it a cash bond. He can do it with uh, a bank. Uh, one, what would a, Lena, what's a bank loan going to cost on a bond? 2%? Well, it would be a letter. 5%? It'd be a letter of credit. And for the amount you're talking, yeah. it'd be pretty expensive, actually. Because it's right. so small. The right. smaller the letter, the more, more expensive. expensive they are. But I think mm -hmm. most of them are a little around 5 to 6% or that rate. But Sure. And and the so anyway, I just, yeah, I just don't want to leave the city hanging out and having to come back with nothing uh, being done and no way of paying for it if we end up having to do it. Well, and I'll just add, um, I don't really wanna meet with you individually. I'd much rather be in a work, a work meeting. That's kind of the right place for this. We just canceled our April 6th meeting. So we'd be talking May. So you'd have a couple months to come back and meet with us. So maybe it's an eight month time period because we're delaying because we canceled a meeting or something or seven month or something. And the other thing that's been swirling in my head is maybe the stairs stay, but that's just like a maintenance access and your public use stairs that you put somewhere else. That's, that could be another alternative you bring to us. What about, well, see, in my mind, and Denny's worried about the default. If we don't, in the time period set, if we don't cure it, what if the roof just remains as is? It's a roof. It's not occupied. The pool doesn't necessarily get finished. What what is the what is the would, adverse position the city city's in? Most the, roofs aren't occupied. Would the stairs come down at that point? Would there be any reason Can to we have access? COs on the four units underneath. What? Can we no, 
I don't think as long as the structure yeah. itself is yeah is okay I think, without the use on top I think it can you could separate the use off of it but I, remove the stairs or lock them we just lock up the stairs that it, that's the easy part of the provision is you just uh, again, there's no access to the roof deck yeah. until the resolution's met. I mean, that's 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 as easy as it is. That's where I that's where I like I like I said the the that's where I'm not concerned on the bond. I, again, I guess where the concern comes is the policing side of it. All of a sudden, people are there, you know, swimming. But I'm I'm pretty sure Tom's going to let us know the day that happens if if the resolution, which is okay. I mean, that's what we're trying to resolve. And, and, uh, but if they are there swimming, what is your alternative? The pool's not done, right? The pool is not done. So there's no swimming. So you can't swim in the, the space that's there. We want to improve that. But so you we can't want to do what we want to figure a solution. Right, but, but you we, you would agree to not do that until the solution right. is fit. They would stay just like it is on top of that roof. We won't. We we're, we're until we know we can do it. We're not going to invest money in in it because it uh, it's, and that, may be a non. Uh, will your bank happen. will your bank close your construction loan without completing not your construction? Requiring us to do that amenity to close yeah. the construction. And and to we be clear, to that's in the, the agreement. Already, yeah, and that's pretty it, common. Uh, yeah. uh, a water feature of that again, I don't, I don't see just knowing what I know. I don't see any reason you couldn't close the loan and all that. But that's that's where I'm not concerned on that. If we, if if part of the agreement is denying access to the roof until it's resolved under it, it's the applicant's got every motivation to finish it. The residents are satisfied until that's it's done. I just, I think that's a pretty easy I, again from the whole how you how you address it I, um i i think but yeah i think that's a pretty easy way to put it in there and then and then we're not set on the time if if eight months goes by and we haven't resolved it we've you know it just takes the time needed i i do want to address denny's comment about certificate of occupancy denny i i think once those are issued i i think we need to just accept that that they're issued. I, I don't think pulling those, pulling those back is a realistic option. I think that our our remedies under the if we sign a settlement agreement is our, our contract remedies. In other words, if the contract isn't fulfilled, we go into court and we and we make a case for breach of contract. So and to be totally frank, that's part of the reason we're here talking about whether we issue a condition, a, a certificate of occupancy or not, because yeah. I think once it's issued, it's issued, mm -hmm. unless unless there's a reason to condemn a building or something, you know. Well, well, and I, again, from from both sides, there's there's motivation on the applicant. We're we're in March. We're in the best time of the year to to so. The rates are going up, so I, I think there's incentives on on all parties to get it, and and certainly I like the with, without an access it that that solves the problem until it can be addressed and on that. So I I'm I have no problem there with without the, as long as the language in there until it's resolved, there's no access to that. I think that's that that solves. We'll take care of that. Lena, um. with that. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good with the, an amendment to the settlement um, that includes no roof access until it's resolved. Um, yeah, I'm good with that. Krista? I'm good with that. Um, um, part of the discussion? I'm You're still not good I'll, with it? I'm still not good with the <laughs> CO. I think the CO becomes the real whipping post in getting it accomplished. Yeah. yeah, I'm like 50-50 on bonding or not. Um, I do feel the plight of the business here. I'm a small business owner, and it's hard when you run up against something you weren't expecting and things didn't quite work out like you planned. And I've been through that scenario already once in my life, and it was not very fun. So I totally empathize with the Kohlers here. So I would love to find a resolution. Um, I do agree that it's been pretty effective to hold back the CO up to this point. And so I think that's gonna work in the future as well, but I don't know if we have to be that strict about it. So I think I'm more on the side of let's restrict the access to the roof 
and and I'll tell you right now, like I don't love this design. Um, I think it's kind of a quick fix kind of a look. And so I hope you could come up with something much better. Like you've done an amazing job over there with the design of the buildings and the look and the uniqueness. And I like the marriage of the modern and the, the heritage. And I think you've done a great job over there. So I love to see what you can come up with. And, and so I would agree to, you know, not make this the requirement as part of the, the, uh, the settlement. Got to have something in the in the settlement, though, and then the ability to substitute right now. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I think that's I yeah. think that's smart. I, the other thing I would and and I this is something Brock and I were just discussing, and that is uh, really, I guess, a question for you, Richard. If if you decided not to build this structure, and you couldn't get an alternative approved. Um, or didn't feel like you had an alternative, would you be willing to just remove the stairs and just do away with the roof access? Would you be willing to remove the stairs and do away with the roof access Well, I, as an alternative? I, I, I see what you're saying. As a desperation alternative, I may have to do that. Certainly don't want to do that. Sure, but I what I believe, I think we have remedies short of that. But no. I, I think we, pro we might, but what I'm saying is what if we, what if we wrote the settlement agreement so that it gave you three options, either build this structure, propose an alternative that's approved by the city council or remove the stairs. And, and if, if, if that requires more time, like Jarrett said, maybe six months is a little short, you know, well, that's up to the council, but. You're, you're worried about removing the stairs and if their stairs go to nothing, right? There's no pool and there's no green roof. The only people that will want to go up those expensive stairs are maintenance people. I, I don't know why the stairs can't stay. You know, it's <laughs> you, you're depriving us of the pool, which we want, and the green roof, which we want for our guests. And that seems to me to be what you want to deprive us of. The stairs going nowhere aren't, they just look dumb. You know, well, I, I, the reason. <laughs> don't the, want to have the cost of tearing them off. Yeah, that? the reason I think that's a good idea, though, is because. It absolutely resolves the issue. Um, it resolves the issue from the neighbor's standpoint. It it makes clear that that nothing is going to be done with the roof. And again, this is it's only one of and three it's options. Only totally applicable if we can't do correct. Anything. Correct. I, I'm not in that instance. I'm not opposed to it. But okay. I still think that there's going nowhere aren't of much value. So okay. Well, and I'll leave it up to the council to give me direction on that, but. I think that's the direction I can speak. Can I've got three nods over here and a half a nod there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Did you want me to nod? I've been you were nodding the other way. <laughs> <laughs> but that, yes. We need a motion. That's my next question. My only question in doing this, is it okay to individually contact you or do you want me to do it? Jarrett suggested in a work meeting, right? I'd, I'd prefer an individual one-on-one -on -one if it's at all possible because it, it gets me answers from specific people and it all happens quicker. What if we schedule the site visit for May and we give you two months to get over there and council will do a site visit as part of our work meeting and then you'll have in the opportunity. May? Well, I'm trying to be ready for that in May. I'm hoping first, to get something on the table well before May. First Wednesday in May, May 4th. all of them will come to you. And, and they can, and you have to do that for public notice, right? right. So, yeah, and that's right. Fine. That's well, fine. and and I'll just I'll just add. I just would ask that it's in the middle of the day, not after about four or five p.m., and not in the morning before eleven. What about right at five? And it'll be lighter in May. Five is okay. <laughs> no. I, I was just going to say, Richard, you you always are free to contact the individual council members. Their emails are on the city website, but it's up to I them what, whether they talk to you. <laughs> I've been working with you, Matt. My attorney has, and we have been counseled not to do that sure. until, until it's, there's a public hearing. Now there's a public hearing. I'd yeah. like to if it's okay. Yeah, um, I have it, no objection. It's up to the council whether or not it, it's up to them. they want to meet with in you one-on-one. -on -one. Exactly. But we'll plan on work meeting over there in May. But let me just, let me offer this caveat though, after the agreement is signed. Okay. I, 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 the site yeah, is after the agreement. I don't think it's going to be constructive until then. So, okay. I but, but I will, I will commit 
to work as fast as I possibly can to get you a revised agreement. And as soon as tomorrow, I could I can get some. I, so. I have to say that the delays that we've experienced have not been on your shoulders. Most of them. I just uh, I understand that. <laughs> well, I, it's that's not needed, but I appreciate it. Well, okay. so that means he could have a CO tomorrow. Is that what you're saying? Or okay. within a week or something? I, Cody? Like, how long <laughs> does it take to get that CO? As soon as, <laughs> excuse me, as soon as the agreement is signed, I'm, I'm fine. Um, there's a few outstanding items that Mark has reassured me that have been resolved. So I want to and physically I see that. But as, I would, Cody, I would like to meet with you tomorrow, if at all possible. Well, is it that's, that's fine. As long as it's a little bit shorter than the meeting tonight. <laughs> as long as it's a little bit shorter than the meeting tonight, I'm happy to meet with you. I'm thinking about 10 minutes. I don't think we're... But yeah, so, so long as the, those items have been rectified, then I'm fine issuing the CO. I just need information that you, I think you'll have. Okay. Perfect. Do I need a motion? Um, no, I don't think you need a motion. I think I have the direction I need, so... Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, guys. No. Oh, no. I'm giving you... How many times have I let a goober come to the mic tonight? <laughs> Uh, just one comment. Keep in mind that the that's was proposed here. I don't know if that's going to what you're planning on, but that solves maybe the Goobler issue, but does not solve the Cloward or the Gates issue or the Aikens issue. Something's got to happen to where those stairs are not being observed or infringing on everybody's. One property. one thing to recognize is that. If you go upstairs in any of your guys' houses and you look out the window, what can you see? How much of people's yards can you see? Well, but I'm just thinking two-story homes. If I stick my head out the window, I can see a lot. View is not necessarily, I mean, we're trying to do what we can to make these things, to minimize the invasive privacy issues in your yard. That if I have a two-story house and I can see over the top of my neighbor two doors down the road, do I have to mitigate that? Yes. You, did, you didn't have to mitigate the impact of your two-story home from that property when you build it. The difference would be the two-story home would be offset a lot further than the stairs are. But sheds and everything else. We're going to do our best. I'm not going to make any guarantees. We're going to do our best to get this thing resolved so that we can all move on with it. Um, but protect and two or three down the street, that's a hard sell. I mean, that's a hard thing to do physically. So understand it from that side too. Well, we understand it. We just wish the stairs were where they should be. Okay. All Thank right. You. I did have one more question for you, Richard. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about tonight. What's the hesitation on your users to use the parking lot? Um, okay. <clears throat> we have a grass parking lot. And particularly during what we found out, is when it storms, if the parking lot floods, and if the cars drive on the flooded ground, mm -hmm. they tear up the parking lot. We've resotted. It's uh, we're just kind of nursing it. We when we only have a few guests, one or two, we will ask them to park on the driveway and not in the parking lot if it's a damp condition at all. During the winter with the frost, every morning was a damp condition because the frost getting absorbed into the ground. So we're learning as we go. And when we do have guests, we're trying to ask them to park just adjacent or we're trying to figure out where they park that's not a burden on our neighbors. When we have a lot of guests on a weekend, we have occasionally asked them to park in the diagonal stalls on, by the city. And that's, but we've asked them to park there after a time of day when the We need you to use your parking lot. What's that? We need you to use your parking lot. And. I, I want to, I want to get the grass established so we can do that. Okay. That's the, the stage we're in. And then are you on secondary water? Yes. Okay. Everything's second. Okay. All right. Get them in the parking lot. Because we get, we get a lot of public comments and concerns about parking on the street, and parking in the city stalls and those types of things for the business. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And it's a requirement, Mayor. That's, yeah, that's so a it's business a requirement. requirement. So if the grass isn't working, you can get pavers that are porous. I mean, there's we understand that if it doesn't work, we've always told the neighbors we're trying to make this work. It's an unusual solution. Yeah. If it doesn't work, we can't guarantee we can continue with the grass or the grass. Yeah. Yeah. All right.
Thank you. Okay. Mayor and council reports, Ben. I've said enough, Mayor. <laughs> Where's Wendell? Even if I had a whole bunch, <laughs> I'm just, I'll get them next time. <laughs> I have nothing. I'll give you an LPC update next meeting. Krista? I don't have anything. Benny? I don't have anything more to say. I'm like Ben. <laughs> Wendell's sitting to the right of me. He said no. <laughs> sure. I also do not have anything. Uh, Gosh, I had like six it. pages, but I'll did. wait till next time too. Okay, so any any of the staff, you guys have sat through this whole meeting. Do you have any issues you need to present to council tonight? You guys are okay. Yeah, Brad, Chief. <laughs> nope, everyone wants to Just go home. Heads up. <laughs> Heads up, true grits here this weekend. Yep. So, you know, it's going to be good weather. Uh, and I'll just throw it. Simmer on. Chacon, I spoke with her today. She asked, just wondered if any of the members of the council would like to do the kickoff, kind of send off welcome at 8 a.m. Saturday morning Where? to the racers here at City Hall. Oh, for the, the true grit bike race. And they're serving beer. <laughs> Yes, over there. <laughs> if you ride, you have to ride the event. <laughs> She'll probably give you a wristband. <laughs> you have to ride what is, 100 what is, miles. What, just, what is it she wants? It's just a welcome and kind it's of a, start. If you stand up there and I've done it before, it's easy. <laughs> Nobody even wants to talk to you. Ben gave I got it. 8 a.m. Saturday morning. I can send them off. Awesome. It's, I'm just excited they're getting good weather. They've had yeah. two terrible years, and and it's fantastic they're getting good weather this week. It'll be chilly, but I don't think they care when they're biking through the hills. Oh, I've got my. You boy. got a voice. Oh, you'll you'll be fine. They trust me. They ain't listening to you anyway. They are. <laughs> So. They are in the mood, and there's you're the last thing they're thinking about. I'm gonna let them watch out for the shooters. Bike oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no executive session, right? No motion to adjourn. So moved. Second motion by Jarrett, second by Krista. <laughs> in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs>